Welcome back to Greenville, Tennessee. Actually, welcome back to Kingsport, Tennessee, as the Wildcats get set to take on Greenville in the second game of the day for the Oak Ridge High School baseball team. Both teams are warming up. We're about 30 minutes off our schedule. We started the earlier ball game against Sevier County about 30 minutes late, and this one's going to get underway probably about 40 minutes late. So we've got another 10 minutes or so before this one gets started. Earlier today, the Oak Ridge Wildcats played Sevier County. Going into the sixth inning, the Wildcats were looking good. They had a two-to-one lead, but then a disastrous sixth inning. Hurt the Wildcats, four hits, several walks, several errors, and just some uh, not typical Oak Ridge High School baseball play in that sixth inning. And Sevier County, give them all the credit in the world. They took advantage of it, and they win the ball game by a final score of seven to two. That was the final score from the first ball game. Tonight, the Wildcats playing the uh, second game against the Green Devils. We just watched them play, and Sevier County beat them as well. I think the final score of that game was something like seven to seven to nothing. And so Sevier County winning their first two ball games. Oak Ridge will play Abington, Virginia tomorrow. The site of the game has been moved. The Wildcats were scheduled to play at Dobbins Bennett tomorrow, but we're going to Johnson City to play. So a lot of movement. I believe the game is still at 1 o'clock, and we'll have the broadcast for you here on our YouTube channel, Prep Radio. Longest road trip we've done this year for the baseball team. I was hoping to go to Alabama. I never got a chance to. I was kind of scheduled, scheduled during the what would have been the Boys State Basketball Tournament, which we had hopes of going to, so couldn't make any plans for that. And um, hopefully the Wildcats will have an extended season. We only have about – after tomorrow, only about, I'd say, six games left in the regular season, including two district games Monday and Tuesday against the Hall's Red Devils, and that'll close it out. We're moments away from the start of this one. The Wildcats in Greenville take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups live from Hunter Wright Stadium in Kingsport, and we'll be back in a moment.
Welcome back to Kingsport, Tennessee, Hunter Wright Stadium here in Kingsport, home of the Kingsport Axemen, a summer collegiate uh, team, I guess. Uh, let's go down the starting lineups first for the Oak Ridge Wildcats, leading off at third base, Mikey Teasley, batting second and catching is Parker Free, batting third at first, Peyton Witter, batting fourth and pitching is Cam Welch, batting fifth, the DH, Cy Stevens, Batting sixth in right field, Richie Ferreira. Batting seventh at second base is Alex Franklin. Batting eighth in left field, Camden Britton. And batting ninth in center field is Warren East. The shortstop for the Wildcats, Noah Wood. Looking over at the Greenville starting lineup, leading off in center field, Maddox Bishop. Batting second in left field, Connor Ireland. Batting third at shortstop, Carson Quillen. I hope we're saying that right. Batting fourth at second base, Colton Richards. Batting fifth, the pitcher, Will Harmon. Batting sixth, the catcher, Noah Murray. Batting seventh at third base, Kane Ricker. Batting eighth, the designated hitter, Corbin Cannon. Batting ninth at first base will be Colton Smith. And playing right field for the Green Devils is Carson Norris. And, David, we I guess should we issue an apology uh, for our, I guess we made a mistake earlier today. Yeah, earlier in the ball game, I think I made a mistake by saying, uh, kind of switching Noah Wood and Warren East names back to back. And the person who pointed that out to me was Warren East. <laughs> I guess uh, he did something well, and uh, uh, obviously I apologize for that. I don't know. I, either I wrote it down wrong or something, but, you know, unfortunately things like that happen, especially when you get to my age, Lee. You'll, you'll find out someday. But uh, Warren was up, not ups, upset about it. He just says he just was letting me know because in the next ball game he wanted me to say his name correctly. And so and hopefully we'll pay, we'll know to pay attention this time. We'll pay attention to the numbers uh, for both teams. Obviously, uh, that's obviously we we want to get players' names right. And uh, you know, it was probably not a game. Oak Ridge wants to repeat here against Greenville. I believe they were just shut out 7 nothing. I believe is what the score we were told. And I don't believe they scored any runs in that last inning. So uh, Greenville shut out. Uh, Sevier County uh, outscoring their opponents today 14-2. to They're a good little team over there, Sevier County. A lot of fundamental baseball. And, you know, like you said, Oak Ridge could potentially meet them in a sectional. But, you know, Oak Ridge need, needs to worry about maybe getting there first. But... Uh, Oak Ridge is going to play a, a very quality opponent uh, coming up here in a minute, Greenville. Greenville won the Class 3A state championship last season at MTSU. And we, I looked it up moments ago, and I forgot to see who they beat. But now with four classifications, Greenville uh, being in 3A, Oak Ridge in 4A, Greenville winning the 3A state championship. And really it really doesn't matter what class you're in. If, you, if you're a state champion, you're, you're a good team. And that's, you know, uh, shows what kind of program Greenville is. I know they won state in 18, and then obviously last year. So they're a team that has state championship. They've got state championships on their resume. I don't know anything about their coach or how long he's been there. But they're obviously a good program for their class, and it should be a good opponent for the Wildcats tonight. They're looking to bounce back from what ended up being a disappointing 7-2 loss, but Oak Ridge really had the lead for most of that game, and then the wheels just fell off. Uh, in that last inning, that sixth inning, the game only lasted six innings due to time. I don't know if we'll have another time limit in this one because I can't imagine there'll be another game after the Wildcats and Green Devils face off. So should be another good game here. Oak Ridge looking to bounce back, looking to get those bats going. No Caden Black in the lineup. We talked about this off air. Caden Black kind of that anchor offensively. Oak Ridge missing him right now. Obviously they're looking to get him back later in the year, but uh, there needs to be obviously some other guys who step up in the lineup and anchor that offense and you would like to see the Oak Ridge bats uh, come to uh, come alive here in this second game you got to figure with Greenville you know a solid program as they are in class 3a that you're going to see a solid pitcher and so you know, Oak Ridge um, they're going to see some good pitching and just attack their attack their pitching the good news is the rain has stopped it would appear it is cold it is chilly there is no wind we do have the window open I think that there's a little bit of delay there's uh one of the light banks is not functioning currently. I think that might be the problem. I'm not uh, honestly sure. Uh, the, the referee, uh, the referee, the umpires have, have discussed it. They're pointing to one light, 
one light uh, stanchion over to the right, and it is not functioning. We are dark in the press box, too, but I think we still have power, so I guess we're good to go here in a few short moments on our YouTube channel, Prep Radio. Tomorrow, the Wildcats scheduled to play Abington, Virginia. I think uh, it's going to be in Johnson City tomorrow. Yeah, we were told by coach, uh, I guess, pitching coach for the Wildcats. Ball. Yep, okay. So he told us that uh, the game, I guess, has been moved to Cardinal Park in Johnson City. So and I'm assuming they would continue playing Abingdon, Virginia. Um, but I'm looking forward to going down there. That's a place I've never been. I don't think you've ever been. Um, as yeah, I can see the light that's out. I can see the light they're talking about in – I don't know. It looks like somebody was on the phone down on the wet bleachers. We saw a lady slip earlier. She was okay. Well, I don't, I don't think there's any representative here from this, this actual park, actually. In fact, when I, I went out a moment ago to, to uh, get something out of my car, and they had already taken the, the ticket guy had already taken up, and I've only seen, like, two guys that have worked this tournament. And there's, there, and there's more lights at this ball field than to me there are at other high school parks. I mean, this field's pretty well lit, so. Oh, let's see what we've got here. Well, it looks like uh, they're looking at the, perhaps those are the light switches. And so they're, that's the, that's the guy that was there a, a moment ago who was uh, kind of the, the guy in charge of the, of the park here. And hopefully we'll have baseball for you here live from uh, Hunter Hurst Stadium. And, I mean, to me, I feel like, I, I guess the light, since it's so close to home plate, I feel like if it was one of those light poles way out in the outfield, it would be okay. I know back at my high school we always had light problems and we just kind of had to play through it. But, I, I mean, I think if, if both teams agree it's safe, then maybe they'll play, maybe not. Not sure if there's any sort of rules, TWSWA rules. I'm not sure. It doesn't. I mean, it's very well lit out there. I mean, most high school parks are definitely not this even well lit, even with those banks off. But maybe it's a little different perspective if you're out in the field. So we have a little bit of a delay here. We appreciate you watching. And if you're watching on our chat, uh, watching our stream, and you're on the chat line, and you would like to uh, let us know where you're watching. I know Jewel Snodgrass is watching our broadcast today. Anybody else on the chat line right now? Uh, not at the moment, but anyone watching, uh, I believe you have to sign into a YouTube account, I believe, to leave a chat. Um, I could be wrong on that, but feel free if you are watching uh, wherever you are on your phone, tablet, uh, leave us a chat. Tell us you know, who you are, where you're watching from. We like to know where people are watching from. Uh, you know, the Oak Ridge, whether it's football, basketball, really those are kind of the main sports that – uh, you all kind of mainly broadcast, but you, we hear, we see grandparents and family members from, you know, you hear from Florida, uh, New Mexico, anywhere really. We there's uh, watchers and listeners from all over the place, and so looks like we've got uh, some viewers here so far. As I'm looking at the YouTube, Greenville stream, beat uh, Upperman. If you oh okay, that. Upperman, yeah. Upperman, Upperman's in the, I know it's in Putnam County. It's just outside Cookville, but yeah, Greenville. They're coming off a, a state championship season, so. It's going to be a good test for Oak Ridge. If they ever play, it's 8.45. This is supposed to be an 8 o'clock scheduled game. And it's not like Oak Ridge has to be up early in the morning. The game isn't until 1 o'clock tomorrow as the coaches have gone back to the dugout and the umpires, let's see. They're getting ready to play. Carson yep. Quillen, incidentally, is a Virginia Tech signee. Oh, okay, so I did he, not know that. he's their best player. Okay. Uh, I heard that from a good friend of mine, an umpire in the Knoxville area, Rick Hendricks. Who used okay. to play? Yeah, Carson for the Quillen Cats. batting third at shortstop for Greenville. Yeah, it looks like the umpires are getting ready. I guess we'll play with a diminished. It, I mean, it is brighter out there than any any uh, field, honestly. That uh, that any most high schools play on. So, David, wonderful news. The lights are coming back on. So, whatever that gentleman did, uh, he came up here, maybe flipped a few switches. Uh, just outstanding news. Now we can finally play baseball. And Greenville is going to be the home team, and they are getting ready to warm up. And we are moments away from high school baseball here on our YouTube channel, Prep Radio. Appreciate all of our viewers. That, uh, that severe county ball game, that sixth inning, hopefully that won't repeat itself in this one.
Their Greenville pitcher can fire some heat. I don't have Jeff Ulrich up here to let me know the miles per hour. He has a little device. He sets it up, and um, no device to set up. So I, but he throws throws hard, and we'll see what kind of a game they lost their first ball game. Seven seven to nothing uh, was the final score. Will Harmon, the pitcher for the Green Devils, coming into the left side. and Looks like he's throwing maybe in the high 70s, low 80s. I'm not sure. Uh, we obviously don't have a gun up here. but And as the, ooh, the lights have been turned on here in the press box, having a light issue, David is working out with, I guess, a worker here. David, did we get everything figured out? Oh, don't fall out of your chair. Did we get everything figured out? Yeah, we got figured out. We got lights in the press box as well, so we're good. And uh, here we go. Wildcats taking on the Greenville Green Devils. I was telling you earlier, I mean, we've played them in so many – we have played them in so many other sports, you know, like football, basketball. And I just don't – we might have played them in football in the past. I'm just trying to fill time right now because uh, – uh, why don't you run down what happened in er where we're about to start. Here comes Mikey Teasley, and we are about to have baseball for you here from Kingsport at Hunter Wright Stadium in Kingsport. And Mikey will step in. What did Mikey do in the first ball game? I know he had a Mikey double. was 1-4-3. Uh, had a double in the fifth inning, grounded out to third and short. So one for three back in the first you game. Might want to adjust the camera angle there as the first pitch is a foul ball. And then and we are underway here from Kingsport, Tennessee. As um, <laughs> I admitted it at least, I, I told him. No balls in one strike. It takes 10 minutes for those lights to warm back up once they're turned off, I was told by that, that gentleman. Mikey steps back in. The scoreboard's not working. They don't have a PA announcer. So once again, we will try to keep you updated the best we can. Here's the pitch to the plate. Cut on a missed. And count, I believe, is one and two. I had taken my eye off of it a little bit to talk to the, the guy who was fixing the lights. <laughs> one ball, two strikes. The pitch, a little bit low, I guess. Let me see what the umpire says. And the count is down one and two. Mikey Teasley will be followed by Parker Free, then Peyton Witter in the Wildcat lineup. The pitch, cut on a miss. Mikey Teasley goes down swinging for the first out in the top of the first inning, and Parker will be the batter. Parker is a freshman. Parker had an RBI double in the first ball game. Yeah, Parker won for three, doubled in the third inning, also scored one of one of the two runs the Wildcats scored uh, earlier today in the first game. Grounded out to the pitcher and grounded out to shortstop earlier today, so one for three. Parker will be followed by Peyton Witter, Cam Welch, Cy Stevens, Richie Ferreira, Alex Franklin playing second today, Camden Britton, and Warren East. The pitch to Parker cut on and missed, and that's it's no balls in one strike. Right-handed hitter. Lefty that comes to the plate, looked pretty good, but a little out of the strike zone, and the count is even at one ball and one strike. At least it's not raining right now. A little chilly, but, yeah, definitely cold rain is just awful. No one, no one loves cold rain. Cut on a miss, and Parker swings through it, and the count is one and two, I believe. And no wind either, not really windy. Paul, that ball is hit in the air to shallow center field. Left fielder in on the play makes the and that is out number two in the first inning. I'll get my wording correctly here. The better now is Peyton Witter. Peyton had a single in the first ball game. I think he had an RBI as well. Right-handed hitting junior. Top of the first from Kingsport. Looks like the Wildcats are wearing their same jerseys. That ball is hit on the ground. Two hops to the shortstop. He feels it, throws across in time for out number three. So three up and three down for the Wildcats in the top of the first. Greenville coming to bat. We'll be back to Kingsport in a moment.
David Clary back here along with Lee Wexler here at Hunter Wright Stadium in Kingsport, Tennessee, a beautiful facility, a nice press box. The heater is running. It's running about 73 degrees, but we have the window open, so it's a little chillier than that. I was thinking about this a moment ago. These are the same jerseys the Wildcats wore in the first ball game. The ones who were out in the field, they're probably a little wet. Yeah, it did rain in the first game, rained quite a bit, so I'm sure those jerseys are wet and soggy and smelly. Um, I don't know about yeah, smelly. I don't, I, don't, I don't know that they went back to the – I don't know if they went to the hotel and changed, but – I don't know if they'll wear those uniforms again tomorrow. Camden Welch is the pitcher for the Wildcats. He's warming up. The catcher is Kyron Welch. The first baseman is Peyton Witter. The second baseman is Parker Free. The shortstop is Noah Wood. And the third baseman, Mikey Teasley. Cam Britton is in left field. Warren East is in center. And Richie Ferreira is in right field. Leading things off for the Greenville Green Devils. Once again, it'll be their center fielder. That is Maddox Bishop. He stands in, right-handed hitter. Camden is a left-handed throwing sophomore. And the first pitch of the game for the Wildcat is a strike. And the count is no balls in one strike. Camden has a variety of pitches, curveball, fastball, that pitches hit foul out of play, and the count is 0-2. Looks like Kevin McKeithen has joined the coaching staff. He wasn't, I don't believe, with the Wildcats the first one. Coach Jeremiah Ball has joined us as well. He had to work. Of course, this, we had a 3 o'clock ball game earlier. No score, bottom of the first inning. Cam comes to the plate, hit on the ground. Up the middle, fielded by Noah Wood. Behind the bag at second, throws on the first, low. Bounces away from Peyton, backed up by Kyron. And the base runner can't advance any farther than first. Noah fielded it well, but the throw kind of skipped up on Peyton and he couldn't come down with it. And the leadoff man is aboard here in the bottom of the first inning. Well, Cam Welch does what he wanted to do. He wanted to start off getting ahead, going after the hitter, got ahead uh, with two strikes, 0-2, ended up getting the ground ball. You want to obviously get ground balls when you're on the mound, and uh, just another error right there from the shortstop. Lefty versus lefty here. He squares to bunt and takes a strike, and the count is 0-1. Batter is Connor Ireland, the left fielder for the – Green Devils, as I mentioned, he bats from the left side. Greenville wearing what appears to be black jerseys. He squares to bunt, takes one down low, and bouncing out of his stance is the Oak Ridge catcher. I hope all my rosters are right. I'm trying to look at that catcher, if that's Kyron down there. Uh, he's the scheduled catcher. It's hard to sit. We're in a press box, and the reflection of the glass is a little difficult. He squares to bunt, takes a ball. What's that? Parker Free is the catcher. I, I thought just the way Parker bounced up like that looked a little bit different. That is Parker behind the plate. So help me with the infielders. Is the, oh, it's Alex. Alex Franklin is second. My apologies. Pitch is cut on a missed. And that is a strike. So I went through the first lineup. I made so many mistakes in the first game. I can't make any more in the, in the second. That's that's my goal. Alex Franklin is the second baseman. My apologies. Yeah, our mistakes meter is running high. We can't give any more mistakes. But uh, <laughs> we've got Peyton Witter at first. Alex Franklin at second. Mike Te Mikey Teasley at third. And then Noah Wood over at short. And yeah. Parker Free behind the dish. That's why I questioned it. Because I, I, I watched Parker kind of play all season. And that... The way he bounced up to try to throw to first got my attention. Full count, I believe runner is going. The pitch is a ball, and that is ball four. So they've got runners at first and second with nobody out here in the first. Yeah, walking an, uh, an error and a walk, that is not what you want to have happen when you start a game, uh, especially leading off the game. Usually errors and walks come back to bite you, especially with nobody out. And this is uh, Carson uh, Quillen, I believe, and you mentioned that he is a Virginia Tech 
uh, commit, I believe is what you mentioned. He does, he's so, not a very big guy by no. the looks of him, but he must have some pop in his bat. He, he's kind of a stout fellow and not very tall as I look down on him. First pitch was... Yeah, it was a ball. It looked like a ball. It was down. I, I believe it was a ball. Like we said, we don't, we don't really have a, a scoreboard to kind of help us. He's just missing. I mean, and we called a strike. Late strike call. Wow, <laughs> kind of got the Greenville attention. I mean, it was. I mean, it was a strike. But and I thought, well, he was. He's, is he not going to call that? And he did. Count as one ball and one strike. Runners at first and second. The pitch. That's way up high. The count is two and one. These two guys, Camden Welch, the pitcher, and Parker Free, they've been teammates on just about every team coming up as they made it this far. So they've, they've worked together many, many times in the summer and now in the spring as that pitch is way up high. Camden doesn't usually have control issues, but today must be something different about that mound. Wildcats, uh, John Ulrich started the ball game in the first game and had some control issues. See if Camden can settle down. He's got runners at first and second, nobody out. Just underway, the pitch hit on the ground. Third base side, Mikey Teasley has one at second. That's all he gets. I think he might have been able to tag the runner coming his way towards third, but he took the, the short out at second, and they've got runners on the corners with one out. This will be the second baseman, Colton Richards. He's a right-handed hitter. They've got him on the corners. The lefty comes to the plate, hit foul. Back this way and over to the right and out of play. A lot of noise coming from the Greenville dugout. You know they were obviously being shut out in the game game prior. They want to be on the board, uh, break that shutout, uh, sh shutout streak on the day. A lot of noise coming from that dugout trying to get in the head of, of, of the pitcher. No balls, one strike. No score. We're in the bottom of the first, Oak Ridge and Greenville. Runner at first, takes a good size lead, the pitch. Hit well into center field. That's a base hit. One run scores. It is one to nothing. Green Devils has a solid single to center, and the Devils have the one to nothing lead. Yeah, that ball was roped, and I thought Noah Wood was going to be able to maybe get a glove on it, but it was just out of reach, and that was a solid single up the middle, and Greenville is ahead, one nothing. And the Braves are ahead 6 to nothing over the Florida Marlins. Camden back in facing a lefty this time. Here's the pitch on the outside corner for a called strike. Will Harmon, the pitcher, is the batter. Squares to bunt, bunts it foul. Over the screen, on top of the screen, and it'll roll back. And the count is 0-1. Several batters have squared around a bunt, and I don't think they're showing it just to fake and pull it back. Uh, you know, a team that won state last year already showing bunt, and that's probably just the way they play. They, they're probably a team that loves to play small ball, especially with ducks in the pond here. Want to get those runners over. There's only one out, and this is the pitcher batting. You know, sometimes when I was growing up, a lot of times the you know, with less than two, the pitcher would sometimes bunt, uh, maybe to either give up the out. Um, but especially with high school these days, you know, bunting to me, bunting just isn't. Uh, you know, it's not as common maybe as it was in the past. Yeah, I was going to say that just right before you started speaking that you just don't. We we had a perfect squeeze play against Clinton the other day. As that pitch is hit off the end of the bat, foul, off to the left, and out of play. Cam Britton's in left field. Center fielder is Warren East. The right fielder, Richie Pereira. I got those three guys right. Those three guys are the three guys I see out in the field. First baseman is Peyton Witter. Here's the pitch to the plate. Cut on a miss. That's a swinging strikeout, and that is out number two in the bottom of the first. One run in for the Green Devils. They lead the Wildcats one to nothing. This will be the catcher, Noah Murray, as he takes his shin guards off on the on-deck circle. Did you ever play catcher? 
I was never a catcher. Maybe when I was maybe six in coach pitch, maybe maybe the coach told me to put on the on the catcher's gear. But, uh, no, I was never a catcher. I was uh, – in middle school, I played some infield, always pitched, played some outfield. And then in high school, I was primarily an outfielder and also pitched. My color guy played for Riverdale High School out of Murfreesboro several years ago. Cam trying to get out of trouble. He's got runners at first and second. Two outs runners are going and double steal for the Green Devils and they have two in scoring position now. Is your same high school coach coaching at Riverdale still? I believe so. I believe so. Welch comes to the plate, cut on and missed. Really good pitch, a little right at the belt. And it's a swinging strike. And it's seven to nothing Braves. I can kind of turn that off. I'm starting, I don't have to worry so much about that. Runners at second and third. Here's the pitch. That's way up high. Parker goes up to pull it down. I think the Braves are making up for the disaster of a game we saw yesterday in Atlanta. The Braves just had to struggle on those getaway days. Cam trying to close out the first right here. He does not. The pitch is outside. You probably said that. I know John Ulrich is probably watching our ball game now. He had to head on back to Oak Ridge after the first game, and he's a diehard Mets fan. I'll be surprised, not surprised if he doesn't text me in a minute. Here's the pitch. Ooh. Oak Ridge, Oak Ridge wanted it. It was maybe just above the belt. If, if It was close. Yeah, I thought the umpire was standing up to call a strike. And, you know, regarding John Ulrich, yeah, that's got to be tough being a Mets fan. I've told him that for years. But I don't he, know how many times in his life that they've made the playoffs. I know they made it, the Mets made it a few years ago. And then in 2015, they were in the World Series. So They haven't won one since 1986, as I point out to him frequently. Camden Welch has the sign. He and Parker are having a little trouble getting together. Batter steps out of the batter's box. Wildcats trying to close out this inning without any further damage. It's one to nothing. The pitch. Inside corner called strike three. And I don't know if Parker was already heading to the dugout after he had kind of silently said strike three because it looked like Parker was heading to the dugout before the umpire signaled that it was the third strike and the third out of the inning. Yeah, that's right. And only one run scored for Green, the Green Devils. And, you know, Cam Welch uh, had runners second and third, I believe, with less than two outs, ended up getting back-to-back uh, -back strikeouts. So Greenville threatening. Obviously, if you're Cam Welch in Oak Ridge, you're glad you really only gave up that one run. And as we head to the second, Greenville leads Oak Ridge one to nothing. Wildcats will play at 1 o'clock tomorrow in Johnson City. We'll have the broadcast for you on our YouTube channel, Prep Radio. Never been to that park. I've never broadcast from this park. Baseball is a little different. I, most of the parks that we have broadcast from this year, I've been to many, many times before, and we'll be going to halls next week, and I've been there before. I'm going to have to figure out where to do it. They have a press box, which is above elevated, but they don't usually allow – press in there to call ball games. I've done it one time and then they kind of moved me out any other time I've tried to go. We haven't been, Halls has not been in our district in the last couple of years. Uh, they moved down to 3A for a couple of years and left our district and in all the other sports besides football. And, and they, uh, their population, their school went back up. So they're back in our district. Halls are traditionally good ba uh, baseball program. I mean, they, they've been to the state tournament before. Uh, they've, uh, you know, there's not many teams in our region, honestly, other than Farragut, Bearden, uh, Hardin Valley recently that have really gotten to go recently. Uh, Central back in the 90s several times with Todd Helton and that group. But Halls was another team under uh, Coach Polston who, um, who had some really good teams. And I understand he's uh, battling an illness right now, and we think the best, uh, hope the best for him. He's no longer the coach at Halls. We'll be going to Halls next week for a district ball game. The final two district games. Wildcats swept Carnes, swept Campbell County, and have a split with Central. And Powell, the Powell ball game is going to be made up on the 23rd of April, if memory serves me correctly. And we lost the first game to Powell. So the Wildcats looking for a sweep or a split in that series with the Powell Panthers. 
Pal's good. We saw Pal earlier today. They're in this tournament playing up here as well. Leading things off for the Wildcats will be Cam Welch for the Wildcats in a one to nothing ball game in the top of the second inning. Pitch, belt high for a called strike. We apologize to the right-handed batters. That pole is right in our way. But as I've said many times, it's really hard to do high school ball with one camera. I mean, it's just difficult. And, and with these, these ballparks with these big nets, it's hard to get through them too as that pitch is up high. Two balls and one strike. A little better crowd. I think we have some people who have made the trip to Kingsport. They couldn't make the first ball game. One by Sevier County. Cam's pitch to him is a called strike. Evens the count, two balls and two strikes. Nobody on, nobody out. Top of the second inning from Hunter Wright Stadium in Kingsport. And the pitch hit well to left field. That's going to go for extra bases if it stays fair. It does. Oh, boy. It looked like it hit the chalk. Unless that's an optical illusion. It looked like a fair ball, but nobody seems to be arguing much, so the count remains at two balls and two strikes. And, David, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the stream and see if I can rewind and find a replay of that. I know I got the camera on that. Let's see. Here we go. Cam's got a two-ball, two-strike count. He looks pretty frustrated. It looked like it hit chalk. But oh, boy. That was close. Fair or foul? That honestly looked fair, David. That's what I thought, too, is that pitch is cut on a miss, and that is a swinging strikeout. I thought it was fair, too. I thought it popped up chalk. But I didn't see much of an argument from Coach Free. And that is the first out of the inning. And the batter now is Cy Stevens. You've watched the replay twice. What do you think? I thought the ball was fair, but they call it foul, and we have to move on. One out, first inning. Went to one, two, three here in the second inning. Wildcats have one out. Cy will be followed by Richie Ferreira. That pitch is down low a ball. One ball, actually two balls and no strikes. Because Free didn't argue much, and he's, he's closer to it than we are. Of course, he's from up here. Maybe he doesn't want to anger the... The, the former hometown umpires. Coach Ball told me uh, a couple weeks ago that I needed to lay off the umpires because he is one. <laughs> he does that, and not when he's not coaching high school ball. That pitch is foul tipped into the mid of the Greenville catcher, and the count is two and one. Cy will be followed by Richie Ferreira. Timeout is asked for by Cy Stevens. Pitch, hit to right field. This one is going to be fair. It's going to roll down to the corner. Roll and Cy will round first. It's going to be bang, bang at second. Throw comes in and cut off. It is a double for Cy Stevens. So the Wildcats have a runner in scoring position with one out, and he represents the tying run. First hit of the ball game for the Wildcats, and David already, a, I guess we have Cy Stevens. It looks like he's wearing number 28. The right. jersey says 28, but on our lineups here, we have number 22, so we'll yeah, go ahead he, and fix the, that. The, that one jersey, he does not he does not have the number. They, they can't find it, and I, I should have told you that. All is well. This will be Richie Ferreira, the right fielder. Richie was hit by a pitch. I remember back in the first ball game, that pitch is outside corner for a called strike, and the count is 0-1. Cy Stevens takes his lead off of second base. He represents the tying run. We're only in the second inning, top of the second. Pitch, cut on a miss, a high fastball, right shoulder level, and the count is 0-2. One thing I've noticed, the home plate umpire has been a little slow calling some strikes. Just a moment ago, I thought uh, uh, he was going to call a ball, and it was very just a slow strike call. And a little mound visit here between the catcher and the pitcher. Not sure what that was about. If we're not seeing signs, uh, sometimes late at night. One time, I remember back when I played, 
I would sometimes have issues seeing the catcher's fingers. For whatever reason, it was just so dark. I couldn't tell how many fingers he was holding up. That's usually what, that's what the catcher is calling what pitch to be thrown. Pitch hit off the left side, and this one is definitely foul. And the count, it remains at 0-2. Yeah, on the, the third out, on the third strike, I noticed Parker was already heading towards the dugout. Either he says strike three silently and then does the call because Parker already knew and he was, he was already off. Richie back in. Lefty versus lefty. Cy Stevens, the runner, at second. Had a double to right field just a moment ago. Pitch to him. Low and outside, and the count is one and two. Now, I'll go back to that play that, that Cam Welch hit a moment ago. That, honestly, that should have been a fair ball. I mean, it looked so fair. Pitch outside, called strike three. It looked a little outside, but Richie's not arguing much, and he'll head back to the Oak Ridge dugout. So it'll be up to Alex Franklin, the senior, getting a chance to play a lot more in the field. Alex primarily, when we started this season, was a pitcher. He had shoulder surgery a year ago and has pinch hit several times. He's a good hitter. He went four for four the other day in the, uh, the win the Wildcats had just uh, the other day. He swings through that one in the count as 0-1. Wildcats trailing one to nothing. We're in the top of the second from Kingsport. Alex back in. Pitch to the senior. Cut on a miss, and the count is 0-2. I wonder if the Oak Ridge hitters are having some trouble picking up the ball out of uh, uh, the pitcher's hands. I've noticed some swings and misses. Uh, already three strikeouts already. So just kind of some awkward swings, some awkward at-bats so far for the Wildcats. That one just a little bit low, framed pretty nicely by the catcher. He tried to pull it back up. It was definitely low below Alex's knees, but... It's called a ball. One ball, two strikes. Cam Britton is on deck for the Wildcats, but it, Alex is going to have to reach base somehow. The pitch, cut on a miss on a high fastball, and that is strike three swinging. Well, the Wildcats pick up their first base hit, and they leave him stranded. We go to the bottom of the second inning at Hunter Wright Stadium, Kingsport, Tennessee. Greenville Green Devils, the defending state champions, one, and the Wildcats, nothing. We'll be back in a moment.
Sorry about that. We had a little bit of an internet issue for a second. They've got a runner at first. Do the Green Devils. The pitch is bunted foul back to the screen. And the count is 0-1. Camden Welch on the mound for the Wildcats. We've had some internet issues at this park. It's kind of nestled in a little bit of a, between a hill. And it's kind of down in, in, you know, kind of nestled as the thrower to first, not in time. So we've had some internet issues in the first game. That's why if you were watching the first game, it appeared to be a little choppy at times. And we're having the same kind of issue here in the second game. Hopefully in Johnson City tomorrow at 1, it will not be. Runner going, pitch is high, here's Parker's throw, and he is out. And he is out by a long way. I mean, he went head first on it, but Parker's throw was right on the money, and that is out number one here in the second inning. Yeah, good throw from Parker. He was out all the way from here to Johnson City, so good throw and uh, uh, leadoff infield hit, uh, if I recall, and uh, one out. This is uh, Corbin Cannon, the designated hitter. Pitch to him is hit on the ground. One hop to Peyton Witter. He's going to run the win the race to first, and that is out number two. I think I'm cold. I'm having trouble getting my words out today. It's chilly. The wind's blowing in, and this is our second ball game. So bear with us. We're having some internet troubles, and I'm having some mouth troubles. We had some light troubles earlier. Two outs, nobody aboard. Cam Welch to the plate, hit on the ground once again. Second base side, Alex Franklin fields it, throws on the first in time for out number three. So good job by Camden Welch. He gives up a leadoff infield single, and then Parker throws him out and then retires the next two batters in order. We go to the top of the third inning here at Hunter Wright Stadium in Kingsport. The Wildcats trail Green Bull one to nothing, and we'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to Greenville, Tennessee. Oak Ridge High School Wildcat Baseball taking on the Greenville Green Devils. Cam Britton leads things off for the Wildcats. He'll be followed by Warren East, then Mikey Teasley. Wildcats trail it one to nothing. Coach Will Maddox a little slow getting to his first base coaching box. And yeah, we'd like to remind people to leave a comment or a chat in our YouTube chat. We like hearing who all's or seeing who all's listening and where where you're listening from as well. So no. haven't don't see anybody yet, but uh, we encourage everyone to use the YouTube chat. Pitch to Cam is did he call that a strike? It was it looked above his belt, but not sure. He doesn't really give a definitive signal. I know Jewel Snodgrass is watching our broadcast. Cut on a mist. Let's see what the count is. He'll hold up his fingers. It's either 0-2 or 1-1. One one. Can't tell you. Pitch to Cam. Cut on a missed. I believe the count is one ball and two strikes now. Cam's a sophomore playing in the outfield today for the Wildcats in the second game. Cy Stevens got the start and left in game one. 
Pitch to Kim. Cut on a miss, and that's another strikeout. How many strikeouts does he have? Five strikeouts so far for the Greenville pitcher. That's Will Harmon, the lefty for Greenville. Let's see, one, two, three. That's four Ks swinging and five total. Four Ks in the last five batters. The only exception, Cy Stevens had a double. Batter now is Warren East. He swings and he misses. And the count is 0-1. You know, sometimes picking up the ball out of a lefty's hand, he's not overpowering Will Harmon. He's not throwing really that hard. He's not overpowering the Oak Ridge hitters. I think maybe Oak Ridge, maybe their timing is just off. They can't time it. Maybe he's putting a little spin on it. I think with that lefty, he's kind of got that arm action where the ball is running away to right-handed hitters. Just a lot of swing and misses so far. There's a foul tip, and the count is 0-2 to Warren. Talked to Warren a couple times uh, today here in Kingsport. He's hoping for a good second ball game. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Almost hit him. One of the things I've noticed a little different from our umpiring crew down a little bit farther south, they're allowing the players to stand, some of them, to stand outside the dugout, which is a little bit different. Typically that umpires will say, but maybe there's because there's so much foul room here as the, the pitch is way outside and high. Looks like we're getting some people on the chat line telling us. I call it the chat line. I don't know what it's called. I guess the live chat, I guess, is what it's technically called. Yeah, I've worked in the radio. There's ball four, so Warren is a base runner, the second base runner of the ball game for the Wildcats. And back to the top of the order, we go to Mikey Teasley. Mikey was a strikeout victim back in the first. Parker's on deck for Oak Ridge. There's one out, one on, one to nothing, Greenville. Want to give those shout outs? Uh, Nelly says she just got back home and says, go Cats. Nelly, don't have a last name there. Laurie Scahill is also watching, and uh, Gwen Black. Ron and Gwen Black are watching. And there's oh, a there rip to center field. That's a base hit for Mikey Teasley. And the Wildcats will have runners at first and second. Maybe the second time through the order, they'll see him a little bit better. Ron Black and Gwen, they are the grandparents of Caden Black. Caden's here, seems to be having a good time, but not able to play, so not the greatest time. Better now is Parker free. Parker flew out to left in the first inning. Uh, Laurie Scahill watching from Citrus Heights, California. Wow. I know we had Slidell, Louisiana in the first ball game. Parker stands in. The pitch to him is a called strike. He hesitates a little bit with that, that strike call. Parker behind in the count. No balls on one strike. Peyton Witter is on deck for Oak Ridge. He's the designated hitter. Actually, he's playing first as they're going to have a near pickoff play. The designated hitter today, I guess, is Cy Stevens. He is hitting for Noah Wood, who's playing shortstop today. We hope Caden Black will be soon back with us. Parker. Yeah, hopefully, uh, Caden Black. That's one of your anchors you're in the top part of your order. So, yeah. Runners are going. Here's the throw down to third. It's high, and the third baseman makes a really, really, really nice play to save a ball going into left field. It's a double steal for the Wildcats. The better play, well, the great play was that he saved it from going in, but then he acted as if immediately that the ball had rolled into left field, but wisely, the freshman, Warren East, with a little help probably from Coach Free, um, a little help from him, uh, stayed right on the bag. Double steal. The Wildcats have two in scoring position. They trail it one to nothing. And Parker Free has an opportunity here with a base hit, maybe knock in two. Yeah, Parker flew out to left. His last at bat, anything really in the air that has distance would probably score. Uh, Warren East, the runner at third, and then Mikey Teasley is currently the runner at second. Uh, obviously, you'd love a hit right here from your two-hole hitter, your catcher. To break open the score for Oak Ridge. Only two runs so far on the day. They'd love to get some runs here on the board as the pitcher steps off. David, we also have a Chris Black watching on our YouTube chat. Chris Black says yeah. RWR, Roll Wildcats Roll, I believe is what that stands That's for. That's what that stands for. 
Uh, Chris is uh, Caden's dad, former Wildcat footballer way back in the day. Yeah. All the Black Brothers played uh, football. Now the umpire, I don't know, they're going to get together. Coach Free said something to the umpire, the home plate umpire. You know, there was a pickoff attempt a minute ago, and I wonder if the pitcher – I wonder if he, he was close to balking, I think. I don't know what this conversation would be about. Um, well, if he didn't call it immediately, they're yeah. not going to call it retro. So I'm not sure. I'm checking to see. Are our lights still working? I didn't touch them. I did oh, not touch lights that are still The lights are still on. This has to be the most lit high school. <laughs> when I say lit, I mean lights. Oh, what do we have now? Now here comes the Greenville coach, Al to find out probably what is going on. And now the, the field umpire is once again getting together with the home plate umpire. And I guess there's whatever, I guess they're set on whatever. Well, Greenville coach is still not too happy about whatever. That's one of the disadvantages of not uh, really know what's going on. We don't have a, a reporter. I know Ben George would probably love to be a reporter down on the field reporting for us, but even Ben would not like this cold. Let's get back to baseball here. The Wildcats have Warren East at third base. Mikey Teasley's at second. Parker Free is the batter. Pickoff play at second, and back to the bag goes Mikey Teasley. The Greenville fans in disagreement. Yeah, good, good move. By Will Harmon in the pickoff attempt right there, getting the trailing runner. Sometimes those base runners with runners ahead of them. Uh, or the runner at second right now, Mikey Teasley, just trying to make sure he's falling asleep. Looks like he's shortened his lead up a little bit. Here's the pitch to Parker. Hit on the ground over the pitcher's head. That's going to get a run in. And he is safe at first. Parker beats it out. Good hustle there by the catcher, Parker Free. And here comes the umpire and the uh, Greenville coach to argue. It is a bang-bang play at first, but Parker is safe, and the Wildcats have tied the game at one. Yeah, the Greenville coach, I, you're, you're not going to get this overturned. And the, he, he's upset about something that happened moments ago. I'm not sure what happened. And the play at first, it was a low throw. I mean, you're not going to get an umpire to change a call. Let's see and how long no, the leech has. Now the Greenville coach, he's probably upset his team isn't probably go performing. Back, go back and look at what was that? A, was it a low throw? I, I was, yeah, it, was I was, a, it looked like a low throw. I can go back on the chat right here. I need to get my camera on this. That's the coach I believe I asked for the lineup for earlier. <laughs> was he friendly to you? When uh, you he was. He was kind of confused on what I was doing. But uh, no, never, nevertheless, he let me take a picture of their lineup. So. No ejections. Well, the Wildcats score with Warren East coming in to score the first run of the ball game for the Wildcats, and we are tied at one. And you can hear some other fans kind of ripping the umpires. I'd hate to be an umpire. I couldn't do it. I mean, I, I just to be honest with you, as much as I pick on, a, on officials and – in basketball, not so much in football. What is the deal here? What is the delay? Are they arguing how many outs there are? Cam I have Br no idea. We Cam have no Brady idea. Is the only out in the inning that I have to this point. What did you give on the scoring to Parker? I, you know, I gave that a hit. I thought he legged it out. The, the ball it wasn't dropped, I don't think. I didn't see the ball drop. I think he just legged it out. That's an infield hit. Here's the pitch to the plate, cut on a miss by Peyton Witter. Looks like we've got Izzy Mitchell running at first for the catcher, Parker Free. Our first look at Izzy, I believe, in this one. Izzy usually runs a lot, and he's the base runner at first. He usually goes early. The pitch is cut on a miss by Peyton. And the count is 0-2. David, I'm watching the replay right here, and it's a low throw. He, he legs it out. I, I think that's a good call. The first baseman dug up the baseball. It was a low throw. I, he, he legged it out. I think the umpire got the call right. Runners at first and third. The pitch to Witter is, oh boy, in the outside corner, but called the ball. You can look at the Greenville dugout. They thought that was strike three. But, you know, they're not on the good side of the umpire at this point. Izzy takes his lead off of first. Pitch to the plate. Cut on and miss. And that is a strikeout swinging of Peyton Witter. 
And the batter will be Cam Welch. Cam struck out his first plate appearance. Another strikeout. He's been touched up a little bit here in this inning. Well, Cam's got an opportunity to help himself. Game tied right now. Cam obviously on the mound. He's got an opportunity to put the Wildcats and put himself, obviously he's pitching, put himself and give his team the lead here. Mikey Teasley is the base runner for the Wildcats at third. Izzy Mitchell at first. Here comes the throw over to first and back to the bag will go Izzy. We don't have a whole lot of fans up here. It was an early start in the first ball game, a three o'clock start. Izzy's going, the pitch, down low a ball, and Izzy has a stolen base. Ramon Merriweather in our chat asks, where is the game being played? I guess he thought maybe it was back home, but the Oak Ridge Wildcats are currently playing in Kingsport here at Hunter Wright Stadium. It's a little minor league park here up in Kingsport, the home of the Kingsport Axemen. And we'll be in Johnson City tomorrow. Cam back in, runners at second and third. The pitch is a called strike. And the count is one and one. Hope you're enjoying our broadcast on our YouTube channel. We made the trip up to Kingsport. We know a lot of people couldn't make it, so we're here. One ball, one strike. Pitch to Cam. Hit on the ground over the pitcher's head. Fielded by the shortstop behind the bag. He throws on the first in time to retire the side. But the Wildcats tie the ball game. An RBI infield single by Parker Free, scoring Warren East. And the Wildcats are tied at one. We go to the bottom of the inning from Kingsport, Hunter Wright Stadium, Kingsport, Tennessee. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to Kingsport, Tennessee. The Wildcats tied with the Green Devils, the defending state champions in their classification. One to one is our score. Earlier today, the Wildcats played Sevier County. They didn't fare too well. It was a good game until the sixth inning for Oak Ridge. They led two to one and gave up a, a big inning to the Smoky Bears and they win the ball game seven to two. That was the final score. Top of the order here, David, this will be Maddox Bishop, who reached on an E6 back in the first inning and sc has scored the lone run for the Green Devils. Cam Welch, the starting pitcher, and he throws a strike, and the count is 0-1. The Axemen, Coach Ball was telling me he played, when he was living up here, he played for the Axemen. I'd like to get a little bit more information on him. He played at, pitched at UT and pitched at Dobbins Bennett. Cam throws back-to-back -back strikes. The count is 0-2. I'd like to kind of find out a little bit more about the Axemen, how they got their name. I told Lee to do a little research, but we haven't had good in internet. Yeah, so. service has not been, has not been great. Uh, but what I was able to find out, it's a, a lot of people might think of the Kingsport Mets. That used to be, I guess, a rookie, uh, rookie team for the New York Mets, which probably excites John Ulrich. 
But now I believe in Major League Baseball, they've kind of cut some of their minor leagues, their minor league systems, I think. And so now the Kingsport Axemen, they continue to use the stadium. It is now a summer collegiate team. So I guess college players who I guess can go to UT, uh, some of those UT players can come up here and play in the Appalachian Summer League, we I did, believe. We did find out that Jacob DeGrom, the former Mets player, uh, played on this field back in the day. It's a beautiful facility. I mean, it really, really is. It's really, really nice. Well lit. Artificial turf in the infield, the outfield. Pitch. That's ball four. So Cam got ahead 0-2, but four consecutive pitches out of the strike zone, and that's a leadoff walk here in the third inning. This brings up the left fielder Connor Ireland, who walked back in the first inning and was thrown out uh, trying to steal second back all the way in the first inning. Squared to bat a couple, bunt a couple times his first plate appearance. Let's see what he elects to do here. He does square to bunt, and he hits it foul off the end of the bat, and the count is 0-1. Runner at first. He represents the go-ahead run. We're tied at one. The Green Devils scoring their first run in the first. The Wildcats scoring their only run in the top of this inning. We're in the bottom of the third. Pitch. He squares to bunt again. Takes another strike, and the count is 0-2. Yeah, you know, we mentioned earlier about bunting. You know, we talked about it's just you don't really don't see it as much. And I've seen a lot in both games today for Oak Ridge. I've seen a lot of players square around a bunt, uh, either miss, foul the pitch off, or take it for a called strike. Um, I, I, uh, one, of my, one of my high schools posted a game on YouTube from over 10 years ago, and watching a sub-state game, there had to have been 10 bunts in that game, and that was 10 years ago. You just don't see bunts anymore. It, I think the strikeout rate is so high. I think the strikeout rate is just so high that teams would just rather the hitters just hit because if you hand the other team an out, the strikeout rate these days is just higher, and you, you, there's just not as much putting the ball in play, I guess. At all levels or – just the major league level. I know I would believe that on the major league level. I don't know so much about high school. Central Bobcats, they are, they are a bunting machine as a team. Throw over to first and back to the bag. We'll go the base runner. Play is starting to crawl a little bit as it's very chilly. At least it's not raining. We don't expect any rain tomorrow when we're in Johnson City for the ball game. Big lead at first. Let's we'll see if he goes. Nope. Pitch is up high, and the count is one and two. We're in the third. Second game of the day for the Wildcats. Once again, just a really big lead at first. Especially against a left-handed pitcher. He's going to come to the plate and hit the ball on the ground. To Alex Franklin, he's got the force out at second, and that's all the Wildcats can get. Noah Wood covers the bag at second, and that is out number one here in the third. Carson Quillen, the Virginia Tech commit, will step in the box. He reached on a fielder's choice back in the first inning. Ended up stealing third, has a stolen base. Coach Collins seems to have cooled down a little bit for the Greenville Green Devils. He can fire up, I've been told. The pitch is a called strike. <laughs> he is so slow with that strike call. You know Rick Hendricks, umpire that we all know, he'd be a little quicker on that. Balls and strike call. Runner at first, one out. He's going, the pitch, hit foul. Over to the on-deck area, and the count is one and one. That was interesting. That almost looked like a hit and run. You had the runner moving, taking second, and you, you have what is probably their best hitter, Carson Quillen. It's interesting to have a hit and run on with probably your best hitter up as he fouls it off. Cam Welch checks the runner again, not going this time. Pitch is cut on a miss, and that is a strikeout, and that is out number two. Really good pitch by Cam. It was up in the strike zone. He just couldn't catch up to it. And let's see, that'll be the third strikeout of the game for Cam. And this will be Colton Richards, the second baseman. He singled back in the first and also stole a base. So a single and a stolen base for Colton Richards. Throw over to first and no tag applied. Got back to the bag easily. Peyton Witters playing first today. That's usually the case when Cam 
is pitching. Alex Wood, or Alex Franklin, is playing second. That pitch is cut on a miss. Alex Franklin did not play in the first game. He is playing second base. Parker played second in the first ball game. Noah Wood is playing short. Mikey Teasley is playing third. Cam Britton's still in left. Here's the runner going. The pitch is high. Here's the throw by Parker, and it is not in time. That is a stolen base. The potential go-ahead run is in scoring position. Well, Ireland was thrown out uh, trying to steal second back in the first inning, and he steals it successfully but really close uh, that time. So man on second, two outs for Colton Richards. See if Cam can close the door. In the bottom of the third right here. Here's the pitch. Not this time. Pitch is inside. Almost hit him in the foot. Kind of like one of those Charlie Morton backdoor curves. That he hits a lot of people that way. I, I thought that honestly went between his legs. That may have gone between his legs, David. I, that was really close. And you hate getting hit with pitches in this cold weather. It, never, it, never, it doesn't feel good when it's hot either. Pitch is ripped to left field. That's at least one. And the tie is broken once again around the score. And the Greenville Green Devils take the lead by a score of 2-1. to one. That ball was smoked down the left field line. And it's 2-1 to one Greenville. 2-1 to one Greenville. Connor Ireland comes around to score. That will bring up the pitcher. This is Will Harmon. Will's had a good day on the mound. He's given up the one run, and Greenville gets that run back that the Wildcats scored in the top of this inning. Will struck out swinging his first appearance. Lefty versus lefty. They have another runner in scoring position. Almost goes halfway between the bag at second and third, but retreats back to second base. Cam's a sophomore. Trying to get out of the third. Giving up a run. Pitches hit off the end of the bat. Foul. And out of play. Over towards the parking lot. It's kind of a unique setting for this field. It's kind of in a, in a neighborhood, just outside of a neighborhood. There's houses going up close by. Beautiful. I mean, I, I mean, it's one of the nicest parks we've played in. Pitch, way up high. Parker, free the catcher, pulls it down. The count is one and two. Yeah, it's interesting. They're building a house right behind the field here. It almost looks like it's on the side of a cliff, but there's really not a lot of flat ground here in Kingsport. So I guess you have to build houses on the side of hills. Runner going to third. The ball is hit to Warren East in center field. He can't catch up to it. It's going to drop in, and the Camden pulls it in, and that is another run for the Greenville Green Devils. The ball was hit to left center field. Warren gave it a good try, but just couldn't get to it. Cam Britton, who was playing a little bit more over towards the line, he couldn't get to it. It dropped in no man's land, and the Green Devils lead now by a score of three to one over the Wildcats. Yeah, I thought that ball was going to hang up for Warren East, and he kind of stumbled just shy of, of catching the ball. And I think the Greenville coach is a little upset. I know that's this pitcher who hit that, uh, Will Harmon. I think he thought he should have been standing on second base. I think, you know, when you hit balls in the outfield like that, you, you want to have uh, in your mind, you want to have getting to second base. You want to have a, a double out of the box mentality uh, is what we call it. So, well, but maybe, anyway, they'll courtesy, they'll courtesy run for the pitcher over there at first, and we don't have – any other numbers or names. So there is a courtesy runner at first for Will Harmon. Maybe he lost track of the outs. Maybe he thought there were not two outs. That's the only thing I can figure. Because that, that should have been easily a double. Runner first, two runs in. The Wildcats now trailing at three to one. The pitch hit foul. This time off to the right side and out of play. This is the catcher Noah Murray struck out looking. Uh, in his first appearance back in the first inning. Two runs in this inning. Pitch. Fouled again. Back to the right and out of play. It is cold. I mean, typically in high school baseball, you it's cold. I mean, especially you're in, in you know, the spring. But uh, usually by now, we've had some 70-degree temperatures. But tonight, in the 40s. 
Runner going, the pitch is, here's the throw by Parker, and he airmails it into center field, and the runner is going to advance down the third. And here comes the throw, nobody backing up, and Mikey luckily makes the stop, it keeps it from allowing the run to score, and they have got a runner at third now. Wildcats had a few mistakes in the outfield in the first ball game where they overthrew, and now a little conversation is going to take place on the mound. Wildcats playing tomorrow at 1 o'clock. The scheduled team is Abington, Virginia. The, the site has changed. Uh, we were going to play at Dobbins Bennett. I was looking forward to that. I haven't done a game at Dobbins Bennett since a, I think probably a sub-state ball game many years ago back in the 90s. Is this conversation taking place? Greenville's a good team. They they are kind of similar in some ways to Sevier County. They just put the ball in play. Yeah, and you know, coming off a state championship, there's really no telling how many of these players were on last year's team. Um, I mean, they are a little similar to that Sevier County team. They have uh, put the ball in play a little bit. I'm counting. Let's see, one, two, only three strikeouts. So they are putting the ball in play a little bit. They've hit a few few hard balls. This will be number, this is still number four, Noah Murray. Little mound visit right there from Oak Ridge. Probably just, you know, let's throw some strikes. Let's trust our defense here. Let's get this third out and let's get back in the dugout and get our bats going. Parker gives the sign. Two balls, two strikes. Camden Welch. Two-two pitch. That's called strike three. Really nice pitch that time. Better glares back at the umpire, but it was strike three. But the Green Devils put on the board two or more runs to take a three-to-one lead over the Wildcats. We go to the top of the fourth inning here at Hunter Wright Stadium in Kingsport, Tennessee. Wildcats trail three-to-one. For the Wildcats, it'll be Cy Stevens, Richie Ferreira, and Alex Franklin, the scheduled three for Coach Travis Freeze. Oak Ridge Wildcats, and we'll be back in a moment. Well, here we go again, Lee. The rain begins to fall again here in Kingsport. And the fans head towards the cars or any kind of covered area. It's really hard to see. There's a couple areas where you can see under cover. There's a, there's a kind of a, a porch area on the first base side that people can stand. Maybe a lot of them are moving in that direction. Some are heading to our left here. But I was hoping we'd get through it. With you know, well, hopefully this won't turn to snow. Yeah, I don't think so. I think I think <laughs> the joke. temperature is supposed to be in maybe the low to high 40s. Yeah, I think it must have just been one little cloud. The rain has definitely let up now. It's just drizzling a little bit. Everything was already, you know, cold, wet, and damp. I know those bleachers. You have to be careful walking down the steps. I'm sure somebody probably looked and laughed at me earlier when I was going very slow, uh, holding onto the rail. I didn't want to slip and embarrass myself, um, but. Well, and now it's raining a little harder now. There has been rain on the forecast, and we knew this was possible. Uh, but that's the good thing about playing on turf is that you can just keep on playing. They don't have to fix any dirt issues. don't have to fix the mound. The mound is turf. Home plate is turf. Although we can see some, some of those turf pellets starting to come up. But, um, you know, the grounds crew will probably uh, take care of that. Here's Cy Stevens. He's one for one in the ballgame, had a double, and he swings at the first pitch and fouls it off the screen. Cy in the first game also had a base hit, so he's gotten two hits in the two games here at Hunter Wright Stadium. Wildcats find themselves trailing again, three to one. Pitch, that's a pretty pitch, called strike two. Some noise going on above us, David, but I think we mentioned that these are the same uniforms that Oak Ridge wore earlier, so these are gonna be 
smelly and wet. And it's coming down maybe as hard as it's come down all day. That pitch just a bit high, and the count is one and two. It, it's coming down harder than it did in the first ball game. Check your radar there and see what we've got we're dealing with. And it's kind of slacked up just a bit. Here's the one-two pitch. Ball two. Two balls and two strikes. Cy will be followed by Richie Ferreira and Alex Franklin in the Wildcat lineup. That's the scheduled hitters. Lee says there's a big blotch of green and yellow coming our way. That pitch is hit foul and out of play over the top once again. And Cy stays alive. Yeah, I think we were joking earlier. I don't know that there's a profession that where you could be more wrong and not be fired from your job than being a weather person. I believe they're called <laughs> meteorologists. Yeah, but you know, the weather radar, it does show uh, some, some, some spots of uh, green here. I'm telling you, it is raining harder than it has. And if you're Oak Ridge, you're, you, you're glad you're hitting in this situation. You're making Greenville stand out in the field. Their pitcher's having to throw in the rain. He's having to throw the wet ball. And so, obviously, you, you want to be in the dugout. You want to be hitting in, in, in a time like this. Three balls, two strikes, the pitch, ball four. And so after getting ahead, uh, two, ball, two strikes to none, uh, four straight out of the strike zone, he overthrew, and the Wildcats have their leadoff man aboard with Cy Stevens. Second time in the ballgame he's been on base. As I mentioned, he doubled. And here's Richie Ferreira. Yeah, Richie Ferreira struck out looking, and it looks like, as we mentioned earlier, Laurie Scahill, if I'm saying that right, uh, Richie's aunt watching from California. Anybody so hopefully else? Richie has a good uh, bat right here. Anybody else joining us here? We'll check the chat here in a second. The pitch to Richie, cut on and missed. And the count is 0-1. Sai takes his lead off of first. Nobody out. We're in the fourth inning. Pitch to Richie is high and tight. And the count is even at one ball and one strike. I'm looking into some software where, maybe not this year, I'll talk about it after this pitch. That's way up high. Two balls and one strike. I'm looking into some software to add to our scoreboard where actually it has basically the, the strike count and it has the, the diamond and it has the base runners and such as the rain definitely is coming down hard now. Pitch to Richie. That's another ball. And like I said, if you're Oak Ridge, you're hitting. You want to be hitting right now. You don't want to be in the field. You're making their pitcher stand out in the rain. It's no fun watching any type of baseball or any sports in rain. You'd rather it not rain at all. 3-1 pitch to Richie Ferreira. High. It was, pitch was high out of the strike zone, but Richie took a, took a swing at it. It was at least shoulder level. That was ball four. Let's see if Richie, he's been wild the last. Maybe the rain is having something to do with that. Let's see what this one goes in. It's cut on a miss, and Richie goes down swinging. Richie will... Probably be kicking himself because he probably swung the pitch before at ball four. He did, and the pitcher's working really quick right here. I think Richie may have been rushed to get in the box right there. Um, that's his second strikeout of the day or if, of this game. His second strikeout of this game. The first one was looking that that time swinging. Seven strikeouts for the Greenville pitcher. Here's Alex Franklin. The pitch to him is on the inside corner for a called strike. The seven, or the six, seven, and eight hitters have all struck out to this point in the ball game. Richie has a couple of them. Alex was a strikeout victim as well, and he swings, foul tips that one, and contact maybe between the bat or the ball to the catcher. Catcher's in a little bit of pain. The umpire kind of saves him just a bit as the rain slacks up finally after just pouring down just a moment ago. It's a cold rain too. I mean, it is cold. It is, and good thing we wore enough clothes. Uh, I'm counting seven strikeouts for the Oak Ridge hitters today, or so in, in this game. I don't even – I forget how many were in the first game. Alex hits the ball foul right side over towards the Greenville dugout and into the stands. I don't know. When you get a chance, get a shot and see if you can show the light poles and the rain coming down. That's really the only way the viewers at home can see the – how hard the rain is coming down. I'm just glad we're inside, honestly. Let's see what Alex can do here. One ball, two strikes. Pitch to him, cut on a missed. And that is strike three, and that is out number two. And the batter now will be Cam Britton. He was also a strikeout victim earlier in the ball game.
Lee's getting a shot of the rain coming down. Runner at first, Cy Stevens. Reached on a walk. Cam's trying to extend the fourth inning. Pitch to him is on the inside corner. At the knees for a called strike. Camden Britton will be followed by Warren East. He walked and scored the Wildcats' only run. Back in the third. Cy takes his lead off of first, the pitch. That's up high. Evens the count at one ball and one strike. And water's starting to pile up on the dugouts and the bleachers. Everything's just soaking wet. I think the weather's going to be good tomorrow, though. I think uh, maybe high 60s, maybe in the low 70s, I think sunny. So good weather tomorrow, but need to finish this one out strong. Ball we'll two. worry about tomorrow when we get there, but Oak Ridge, you know, it, down 3-1, had a lead for most of, the f in the, most of the first game earlier today against Sevier County. They, they're trailing 3-1. I know it's raining, but, you know, you'd like to finish this game strong. Pitch from, to Cam is evidently ball three. Three balls and one strike, I think. Strange hand signal there. It's hard to see through the rain in the screen. Britton, the batter for the Wildcats, sophomore. He'll be followed by Warren East. Wildcats, Cam trying to get on base. He swings and he misses. Strike two swinging. And the count is... Full, three balls and two strikes. You can see the water sparkling on the net, especially in our stream. Camden back in, right-handed hitting sophomore. Last year, part of the Clinton Dragon baseball program. Good to have him in the fold. Cy takes his lead off of first. Pitch, swings and he misses, and he struck him out. So, Wildcats pick up a base runner, then three consecutive strikeouts to close out the fourth inning. Sophomore goes down swinging. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning here at Hunter Wright as the rain begins to slack off. The Wildcats trail Greenville three to one. And we'll be back to Kingsport in a moment. Welcome back once again, the Wildcats of Oak Ridge. Looks like we have a pitching change. Looks like Cy Stevens is going to come in to pitch for Camden Welch. And let's see if we have any other changes. Peyton is still playing first base. Looks like Camden Welch has moved to right field for the Wildcats. Kyron Welch is now playing third base for Oak Ridge. So the Wildcats making some wholesale changes. Help me out. Looks like Alex is still playing second base. And let me look. Here. Parker's, Parker's still catching. Richie Ferreira has moved over to left field. And Cam Britton appears to out of the ball game. Warren East will stay in. I think that's all the changes. Let's see, do we have a new third baseman? Yeah, I'm wondering where Mikey is playing now. 
Hopefully Mikey hadn't injured himself. I don't see him unless he's playing short. Is that him at short? Could be. He's a lot taller than Noah Wood. Not much taller, but that looks kind of like Mikey at, at, at short. Kind of zoom in on that. Help me. I can't see through the rain. Is that number three? Cy, his first work at a pitcher in a while. The ball's hit right up the middle, and that's a base hit. Solid single to center. center. And the Green Devils have their leadoff man aboard in the fourth inning. That was Caden Ricker. This will bring up the D.H. Corbin Cannon. Cannon grounded out to first. Looks like the rain has stopped. You see some of the people starting to head on back to the bleachers. They're going to be wet and cold. There's a guy with a Titans, a lady with a Titans blanket on. It looks. We've seen like, a lot of Titans apparel up here. It, it looks like it's soaking wet too. I don't know if I'd want that wet blanket on me right now. Tighten up. I mean, well, that just kind of tells you a little bit about Titans fans. That pitch is just in there for a call strike, and the count is no balls and one strike. I mean, that thing is soaked. That that blanket is soaked, and she's still got it wrapped around her. Titans fans. Tighten up. <laughs> runner at first, nobody out. Bottom of the fourth inning, runner going. The pitch is a strike. Here comes the pitch, the throw down, and he is out. Parker Free throws out yet another base runner. And you're out. I mean, there's no replay. There's no replay in high school ball. There's no need to argue. They're not going to change the call. So just head on back to the dugout, and that is out number one. And yeah, sometimes it drives me insane at the college and pro level when you see the players, when they think there should be a challenge, they have to put the, their hands over their ears like, oh, challenge, oh. Well, they actually have it in college, but. Yeah, yeah. it's like, well, the, co they, the video room is looking at it. So. Uh, you know, the player, like Dansby Swanson used to do that. Like, oh, he'd point to the dugout. Oh, challenge. Here's the pitch to the plate. It is a ball. Like they're not looking. But no challenges in high school. No, that's, that's what I'm saying. There's no need. To, if he calls you out, you're out. I mean, you might as well just head on back to the dugout. Pitch, hit one hop, two hops to Alex Franklin. It's going to be close. He throws him out. We're out number two. The Greenville fans thought it was a little bit too close. You can tell Alex is not at full strength with that arm. He had shoulder surgery, and he just kind of whipped it over there almost three quarters, almost like his brother Jacob Franklin used to throw. That's out number two here in the fourth. Colton Smith, the batter. This is the nine hole. Grounded out to second, his last at bat. Nobody on, two outs. Side trying to work a near perfect. Fourth inning, he gave up the single, but Parker erased him by gunning him out at second on a stolen base attempt. The Green Devils scored one run in the first inning. The Wildcats scored their run in the third. The Green Devils scored two more in the third, the bottom of the third inning, to take a 3-1 to one lead. And, David, I will issue a correction. This is number seven, Carson Norris, the right fielder. They're giving him an at-bat. Number seven, the right fielder, Carson Norris. Now, Carson Norris, we have on the lineup we received, he was, and I'm sure they've probably swapped with their lineup here, he was being DH'd for by Corbin Cannon. So he was not originally in the hitting lineup. Maybe because you got a, well, here's the pitch hit on the infield. Uh-oh. It's going to, who's going to call for it? It's Mikey Teasley behind the mound. He's got it for out number three. So Mikey is indeed playing shortstop, and that is the third out of the inning. We go to the top of the fifth inning. We're in Kingsport. Tomorrow we're in Johnson City following the Wildcats here on our YouTube channel, Prep Radio. My name is David Cleary. We've had some Internet issues today. I've had some mouth issues as well. Trying to get my words out and trying to give, give you the best broadcast we possibly can have. Hopefully the Wildcats have a comeback in them. We go to the fifth inning. Three to one our score. We'll be back in a moment.
Welcome back to Kingsport, Tennessee. This tournament action, Wildcats and the Greenville Green Devils. The Wildcats took one on the chin in the first ball game, losing to Sevier County 7-2. to two. They're trailing in this one 3-1. to one. This Greenville team, as Lee mentioned earlier, won a state championship a year ago, knocking off the Upperman Bees. one to nothing. I think, was the final score. Yeah, it's their second title in uh, program history. They won back in 2018. Uh, the batter here, this is Warren East. He walked back in the third and has the lone run scored for the Wildcats. Freshman takes a ball down low, one ball, no strikes. The Wildcats have, let's see, in this particular order, they have two freshmen starting, multiple sophomores. Pitch to Warren and is cut on a missed. One ball, one strike. Mikey Teasley is a sophomore. Parker Free is a freshman. Peyton Witter is a junior. Cam Welch is a sophomore. Cy Stevens is a junior. Richie Ferreira is a junior. Alex Franklin is a senior. Camden Britton is a sophomore. And Warren East is a freshman. It's a pretty young team. Yeah, it is. And, you know, that could be, I guess, a good thing and a bad thing. A, mainly a good thing because these players are playing young and they're getting a lot of experience. And that will help out down the road. But I guess maybe a – I guess maybe where it could, I guess, hurt is maybe not having that experience. When you get deep in the tournament and postseason play, that experience comes into play. That is ball two to Warren East. Uh, the Wildcats right now, although they've had some success in the last couple of ball games, they, I mean, without really the heart and soul of their offense, and Caden Black is that pitch is hit foul. You know, Caden, you know, not only, you know, he hits the ball obviously real well, he gets hit a lot. He walks. He steals a ton of bases, and he just always seems to be in the, in the mix of things to get the Wildcat offense going. That ball is ripped deep to left. The left fielder back on it. That ball is up, and it is gone. A home run by the freshman, Warren East, and the Wildcats are on the board. The ball might have hit the top of the fence and went over, and that is Warren's second home run of the season, and the Wildcats are back to within one. Three to two, our score here from Kingsport. Ball was hit really high in the air. I knew he got a lot of it. He went over the wall at the 330 mark, and the Wildcats trail it now three to two. And that ball is going to be gone at most parks. And, yeah, I think that hit the top of the wall out there over one of the signs. Uh, yeah, he got all of that. I thought he got under it a little bit, but uh, he gets the, uh, he's actually scored Warren East. The nine hole is, has both of the Oak Ridge runs today. He walked back in the third, and that will be a home run, the first home run of the day for Oak Ridge. And the batter now is Mikey Teasley. Good start for the Wildcats. Back to the top of the order, the pitch to Mikey. He hits the ball well to left field. Left fielder back on it, though. He's going to make the catch for out number one. The ball was hit well, but out. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can rewind it and see what happened on that Warren East home run. It, I, it, it, it looked like it hit the top of the wall, and hopefully I got a good shot of it as Mikey Teasley flies out to left. This will be Parker Free. Flew out to left and singled, so he's one for two. Picked up an infield single and on that infield single and RBI. Three to two the score. The Wildcats trailing Greenville. Parker in the pitch to him. Cut on and foul tipped and the count is on one. Yeah, Warren hit a home run at Bearden earlier this season in the Wildcats blowout win over the Bulldogs. Parker back in. One strike to count to him. Right hand hitting freshman, and that pitch is down low a ball. Ah, it's just out of frame, David. I barely missed it, but it, it hit the top of the wall and went over. So, home run. So he, he, he hammered that. I mean, that ball's gone at really any ballpark, any high school park in Tennessee. That ball's gone. He smoked it. That pitch is down low. And I think the count is three and one. I know I never hit a ball that far, even in batting practice. Warren, he's not a big guy, and he's a freshman. He's got some power. That's his second home run. That pitch is cut on and missed. Of course, the, the field at Bearden to left is not very deep. It's definitely not. This is a major league dimension. In fact, it's deeper in center field here than it is at Truist Park in Atlanta. And, you know, down the lines is 330. Here's the pitch to Parker. That one's up high. 
And now we have a full count. Three balls and two strikes. One out. We're in the fifth inning in a three to two ball game. The Wildcats trailing Greenville in Kingsport. Parker needs to get on base and he hits the ball softly to the shortstop. He throws in time for out number two. So Parker kind of similar to the way he picked up an infield single in an RBI this time. He has thrown out for the second out of the inning. Better now is Peyton Witter. Peyton is 0 for 2 in the ball game. Peyton grounded out to short and a strikeout victim as well. Two outs. One run in on the solo home run by Warren East. Peyton is the designated, not the designated. He was in the first game. He's playing first base. I, I want to get Noah Wood's name as that ball is hit this time to the second baseman on the first pitch, and he throws Peyton out for out number three. But the Wildcats pick up a run a little bit closer. Three to two is our score. The Wildcats of Oak Ridge trailing the Greenville Green Devils here in Kingsport. My name is David Clary, along with Lee Wexler. We'll be back with the bottom of the fifth in a moment. Welcome back to Kingsport, Tennessee. We're glad you've tuned in wherever you might be watching us. We have, uh, I know, at least one viewer in California, one viewer in Louisiana. We also have, let's see, Nancy and Ron Malcody watching us on our YouTube channel. We appreciate it. We're in Kingsport. Wildcats in a close one here. Three to two is the score. I didn't mean to diminish Warren's home run against uh, Bearden because uh, he hit all of that. I mean, it was a big shot for them. But this one in what is Major League Dimension Park, it, it, very impressive. That thing was a monster. I mean, he got that thing up way up in the sky. And he's, I mean, that thing sailed out of here. Cy Stevens is working his second inning of relief. Cam Welch started the ball game. Pitch. Oh, boy. I'm not sure where that one was. I guess a little inside, maybe a little high. Looked good. This is the leadoff hitter, David Maddox Bishop. He is 0 for 1. Walked in the third. Was thrown out stealing. There's a strike. And reached on an E6 back in the first. Yeah, you mentioned. He's, re he's reached both times. You mentioned a moment ago, uh, Warren East. Uh, doing the production out of a nine hole. At the first, maybe three or four games, that ball's ripped to center field. Warren's got a beat on it, and he makes the catch for out number one. Uh, I was going to say, in the first two or three, maybe four ball games of the year, Warren was actually the leadoff guy, and, and Caden was batting second. And uh, both kind of struggled, really, in those positions. Uh, Warren, the freshman, getting a chance to play, but they moved him down, and he's been much more comfortable in this number nine hole. And obviously, you know, when they put Caden back in his familiar one hole, as that pitch hits him in the head, 
And that's a base runner with one out that's here in the fifth. That's Connor Ireland. That's the third time he's reached. Walked in the first and then reached on a fielder's choice in the third inning. So he, Connor Ireland, Ireland, has reached all three times. Scored the second run of the game, did Ireland, for the Green Devils. Just for a brief, really, I guess a, an inning or so ago, the rain just came down really hard. I don't see any rain at all as I look up at the lights, which is good. It's still very cool. Pitch bounced away, and, and Parker's going to have an opportunity. Nope, he's not going to. Ball didn't bounce away too far, and the, the runner from Greenville kind of uh, wasn't sure how far it bounced away, and he didn't take off immediately, but he does, does get down to second base, and now they've got a runner in scoring position. And that's something that happened, has happened in this ball game. When the Wildcats have been able to get a run, Greenville has come right back. So Cy trying to keep it right where it is. A three to two ball game. Pitch is cut on a miss. It's a really nice pitch there by Cy Stevens. I don't think you can see it on the stream, David, but Cy wearing, from here it looks like maybe those pink shoes. I think, yeah, regardless, this is Carson Quillen 0 for 2, the three hole hitter for Greenville. Here's the pitch. Right down the middle, the umpire is, he is taking his sweet time calling strikes. I'm sure he's probably saying strike where the players can hear it, but giving his signal for guys like us up here in the press box, it's, it's a little slow. Carson Quillen 0 for 2, reached on a fielder's choice in the first inning and then struck out swinging back in the third. Pitch to him, down low a ball. Nice stop by Parker Free to keep it from going back to the backstop, and we've got a full count. We have a Michael Teasley watching from Bucky's on the way to Atlanta. Thank you for chiming in in the YouTube chat. That would be obviously Mikey's dad, former Wildcat football player back in the day. Full count, runner at second. Three to two the score, the Wildcats trailing. Pitch. I guess we, now we have the full count. Quill's not very big. He's going to Virginia Tech, as we were told. He, he's not a big guy at all. He's, he's very stocky. He's not tall at all. They got him with a high fastball the last time. Let's see what Cy likes to do. Here's the pitch. It's a high fastball, but just a little bit too high. So back to back batters, a hit batsman and a walk issued by Cy Stevens. Runners first and second. This will bring up. Colton Richards, the second baseman, he is two for two. Scored the third run of the game for Greenville, singled in the first, and then doubled in the third. So if you're Greenville, you've probably got the right guy up here. You're hoping if you're Greenville. Inside out move here by Stevens. Runners at first and second, one out. Wildcats trailing three to two the pitch. Way outside. Wildcats in the first ball game used John Ulrich, Carson Fagan, and Peyton Witter. Those were the three pitchers for the Wildcats. In this game so far, Camden Welch started the ball game, and Cy Stevens in relief of him. Wildcats have district games on Monday and Tuesday against Halls. Might be the reason Cam didn't pitch the you know, any farther than he did. He didn't throw that many pitches, I don't believe. I don't know who's going tomorrow. We'll find out, of course. We'll be in Johnson City as that pitch is outside. And Cy having a little trouble finding the strike zone. Greenville has runners at first and second. Three to two the score. Bottom of the fifth. The lefty checks the runners, comes to the plate. Cut on a miss. That's a really nice looking pitch. Swung right through it. Yeah, runs have been hard to come by for the Wildcats, so you really want to keep this at a, at a one-run ball game right here with one out. Uh, two runs in the first game for Oak Ridge and only two so far. It's only four runs in the day, and I believe, what is that, seven plus five? I think that's, what, 12 innings in my math, my UT education. I, I can't do math. <laughs> the Wildcats in the sixth inning will have the four, five, and six hitters. The lower part of the order, with the exception of Warren East, has struggled the most uh, with the uh, six, seven, and eight hitters all striking out in their 
Combined six at bats. There's movement in the Greenville bullpen. Side comes to the plate, cut on a miss. That's a strikeout swinging. Good pitch, it's high in the zone. Couldn't catch up to it, and that's out number two. Yeah, big strikeout right there from Cy Stevens. I think he got Colton Richards to chase, maybe a, a couple pitches out of the zone. Big strikeout, and this will bring up the pitcher. This is Will Harmon. He is one for two, struck out swinging in the first, singled back in the third, also stole a base. Actually, the runner who stole a base was the courtesy runner. Wildcats lost seven to two to Sevier County in the first game. There's a swing and a miss. Wildcats led two to one going into the sixth but gave up a big inning, that inning, and fall to the Smoky Bears after defeating them nine to nothing earlier in the season. Wildcats trying to rally against this Greenville team, the defending state champions in their classification. They trail it three to two. Another cold wind blowing in the press box. Yeah, and it goes to show you know, how baseball is. And other sports are like that too. You beat a team nine nothing, you think you've, you've got their number, you think you, Here's the pitch, swinging a miss. You, you, you think you've, you've got a good report on Sevier County. You beat, you know, you beat them 9 nothing. But then, you know, you come back today. I don't know how long ago it was the Wildcats played Sevier County. I'm sure it was several weeks ago. About three weeks yeah, ago. Yeah, and, and you come back today here, you know, what? Are, how far away are we? 100 miles from Oak Ridge? Uh, and, you know, you lose 7-2. And baseball, you know, it's, it's a day-by-day -day sport. It depends on who your starting pitcher is. Runners are going. Here's the pitch. It's hit on the infield. This should do it. Alex Franklin. Drifting over, it's Mikey Teasley, though, who calls for it. Who makes the catch in front of the bag at second base for out number three? The Green Devils put a couple base runners on, and they leave them stranded. We go to the top of the sixth inning here in Kingsport. The Wildcats trail the Green Devils by a score of 3-2, to two, and we'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to Kingsport, Tennessee. The Wildcats trailing Greenville three to two as we go to the top of the sixth. I hope we don't have a run or a time limit on this one. I'd like to see them play all seven innings. We, what time did we start this one? I'm not sure. I believe it was around, gosh, 8.30 maybe. So, I mean, that's two hours. I don't know what the time limit is, maybe a little over two hours. That would surely stink if they had to call this game on a time limit. This is a good game here. A yeah. One-run ball game. I think we're in the, what, the top of the sixth here. You know, Oak Ridge looking to add some more runs. A great finish by Cy Stevens working around the hit-by-pitch in the walk the previous inning. Oak Ridge dugout starting to make some noise, realizing that, you know, they got to get some runners on, make some things happen here. Only four runs on the day so far. You would have liked to have had some better, some better at-bats and some more runs. Cam Welch, the batter, he's got a 3-0 count on him now. He's the leadoff man here in the six. He was a strikeout victim in the first inning, grounded out to short. He's 0 for 2, but he's ahead in the count here. Three balls and no, three balls and no strikes. He was the starting pitcher in the ballgame. Didn't pitch badly, obviously, but a 3-2 ball game. The pitch to him is called strike. The old automatic, three balls and one strike. Not sure how many pitches uh, Greenville's pitcher Will Harmon has thrown, but nobody in the Greenville bullpen. There is a solid base hit to center field by Camden Welch. And it's a good start for the Wildcats. He 
had a 3-0 count, took a strike. Then I thought he might earn a base, a base by walking, but he just lines it for a base hit. And it's a good start for the Wildcats here in the sixth inning. Cy Stevens, an opportunity to help himself. Uh, he's doubled back in the second and then walked in the fourth. He's reached both times. He's one for one. And it'll be interesting to see what the Oak Ridge, Oak Ridge will do. Will you see a bunt here? Not sure if Cy bunts often. Uh, close one-run game. We're going to get a mound visit here. There's nobody in the bullpen, so. They had somebody warming up while, okay. they, were, while they were batting earlier, okay. so we'll see if they do make a change. What did Cy do in the first ball game? I think he got at least one hit in the, in the loss to Sevier County, so he's been. In the first ball game, Cy was one for three, had a single, uh, grounded into a fielder's choice, and struck out swinging. So two hits on the day for Cy Stevens. Got a chance to talk just a moment ago with uh, Warren East's grandfather living in Virginia, uh, getting a chance to to watch his grandson play live. Got a chance to see a, a home run, you know, by Warren today. Yeah, that's obviously convenient coming down from Virginia. Not sure where in Virginia, but, uh, yeah, obviously when you're playing up here in Kingsport, I mean, the Virginia border, I guess, is what, within a mile? I don't know how far we are away from Virginia. N not too far at all. Pitch to size, hit foul. Had a play to the right. And then Kentucky's not far either, I suppose. Now we're up here in one of the furthest northeast part of the state. Stevens is behind in the count. No balls and one strike. Camden Welch is at first. Pitches down low. He's He's got average speed. He's he's not going to dazzle you with his, with his base stealing, but he's a smart base runner. He'll steal a base every once in a while, but this is not the time, I don't think. Although Coach Free is very aggressive with his base running. Cy has a one ball, one strike count on the pitch to him. That's a called strike, and Cy didn't believe it. All right, that looked outside to me, David. I think the umpires, the home plate umpires, I think, for both games that we've done today, I think have actually done a pre pretty decent job. I thought that one was a little out, though. And with a lefty, Will Harmon on the mound, it'll be interesting to see he's mixing up his times here. That one's upstairs. It's be interesting to see he's kind of holding that runner over at first, uh, uh, Cam Welch, the runner at first. Every time he picks up his knee, he's kind of taking that look over there to first, kind of holding agree. him over there at first, preventing him from stealing. Here's the pitch to Cy. Hit, foul, coming back. The catcher gives it a look. Can't get it. It hits the top of the netting, and the count remains at two and two. And it makes it hard, too, because if, if you're stealing, you really want to go on first move. If you're Cam, well, if you're anybody, but if you're Cam Welch, it looks like he maybe wants to run. He's been kind of stuttering over there. He's been kind of twitching, maybe going to second. But uh, with Will Harmon, he's kind of got that move where if you take off, he can just throw over. He looks like he's a, presumably got a pretty good move over to first. And it probably makes, obviously, the advantage of being a lefty. If anyone takes off on him, he can just throw over. So Cam will have to be careful here. I know he's been twitching over there at first. Takes his lead. Cy Stevens back in, two balls and two strikes. Here's a throw over to first and easily back to the back. Cam wasn't that far off. You can hear the Oak Ridge dugout starting to make a noise. Richie Ferrer is on deck. We'll see who follows him. Wildcats have, have struggled in the six, seven, and eight holes today. Cam is going, pitches hit foul. Look at good jump there by yeah, Cam Welch. He had an excellent jump right there. I think he probably would have had that bag stolen, but Cy Stevens, i do not sure what the count is. Um, two and two. Two and two, so, yeah, he probably had to. Anything close, you got to swing. Yeah, I thought Cam got a good jump that time. It'd be interesting to see if we see another move, a pickoff move from Harmon over the first. Cam's been twitching over there. It look, he's making it look like he wants to go. He, take, he has a good lead. Let's see, the 2-2 two -two pitch, not going this time. That's ball three. That's way up high. Wildcat dugout for the first time really in this game, really making a lot of noise. Greenville's gone a little silent. It's a 3-2 ball game. We're in the sixth inning from Kingsport on our YouTube channel, Prep Radio. Hope you've enjoyed both ball games. We didn't enjoy the score of the first one. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Hit well, deep, left center field. It is gonna go to the wall. Camden Welch around second. He gets the green light. He's coming around third. The cutoff man will throw it in, but not in time. And the ball skips away and down to third will go Cy Stevens. A booming, long RBI 
hit for Cy Stevens, and we are tied at three. What a hit right there by Cy Stevens. Helps himself. You saw Cam scooting around the base path. The uh, play at the plate really wasn't close, and the ball gets away. We'll score that a double. The throwing error is going to take Cy to third. We'll get a courtesy runner. Cy will come in, and we've got a tie ball game here in Kingsport. And the Wildcats still batting. Batter now will be Richie Ferreira. So the Wildcats, with nobody out. The go-ahead run is at third base. We're in the sixth inning in a 3-3 ball game. A two strike, oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say Richie's 0 for two in the ball game. Bounces away, back to the backstop. Here comes the runner and he is safe. And the Wildcats have the lead. Oak Ridge scores as the Wildcats come in, and I believe that is Carson Fagan who comes in with the go-ahead run as the runner at third base. And the Wildcats have the first lead of the ball game. It's 4-3 to three, Oak Ridge. And just like that, it's amazing how fast things can turn. And we're going to get a mound visit here. I think we're probably going to get a pitching change. It looks like this could be it for Will Harmon. A double by Cy Stevens. Advanced to third on the throwing air. The ball got away from the catcher. So I, I don't know, I guess the error could be on the catcher for missing the ball. And then, a, and then a, the first pitch, it looked like a pass ball. I don't think it was a wild pitch. We're going to get a pitching change here, David. A wild pitch, and just like that, Oak Ridge has the lead. This is their second lead of the day. They had a lead against Sevier County earlier, and this is the first lead against the defending 3A state champion, Greenville Green Devils. We're live on our YouTube channel, Prep Radio. If you're watching us and you haven't alerted us where you're watching us and who you are, we'd love to hear from you on the chat. We'll take a break here. We'll be back to talk more about it. The Wildcats of Oak Ridge in the lead now, 4-3. to three. We'll be back in a moment. Welcome back once again to Kingsport, Tennessee, Hunter Wright Stadium. The Wildcats on top of Greenville now 4-3. to three. Richie Ferreira facing a new pitcher, Carson Norris. He's the new guy on the mound for the Green Devils. And the ball bounces away, and Richie ahead in the count. Now two balls and no strikes. Richie 0 for 2. Two strikeouts and both all the six, seven, and eight hole hitters, Ferreira, Franklin, and Camden Britton, all combined 0 for 6 with six strikeouts. Richie back in. Two balls, no strikes. Four to three Wildcats. Sixth inning. Top of the sixth here from Kingsport. Pitch to Richie. Bounces away again, and that's ball four. So the Wildcats have another base runner, and Richie's on for the first time today. And Alex Franklin, same deal, two strikeouts. And, you know, Carson Norris, I don't know that he threw too many strikes in his warm-ups, and that's two, two balls right there that got to the backstop off Richie Ferreira, or Richie Ferreira in the batter's box. This is Alex Franklin, the second baseman. Alex 0 for 2 in the ball game. 
The Wildcats have come off the deck. They, it started. The Wildcats were down three to one. Warren East hit a home run to make it three to two. Then Cy Stevens a big hit, and then a a pass ball allowed Carson Fagan to score the fourth run as Alex Franklin puts down a beautiful bunt. Pitcher feels it. He's going to throw, not in time. That is an infield single. But then the Wildcats have a rundown play at second. The ball bounces away, and the Wildcats all hands are safe. What a beautiful bunt single there by Alex Franklin. Yeah, exactly. We've been talking about bunting, and, you know, you're looking for any way, anyhow. Alex Franklin, two strikeouts, probably not what the defense was expecting. Lay down a perfect bunt, and, you know, the pitcher, Carson Norris, uh, th uh, the throw over to first, not in time. Although Richie Ferreira had to be a little careful there, almost wandered off too far. They, uh, the, uh, Greenville had to throw over to third. And they, I think they had Richie Ferreira out a second, but a low throw. Third baseman was kind of throwing on the run there, threw the ball straight in the turf and allowed Richie to get back to second. So first and second, still nobody out. And the batter is Kyron Welch, his first plate appearance of this ballgame. He started the Sevier County ballgame. Runners at first and second. He squares to bunt. Takes it low. One ball, no strikes. Wildcats on top, four to three. Kyron started at catcher in the first ball game. Did not start this game. The Wildcats on top, four to three, trying to get more as he squares to bunt and takes another one loud and low. Two balls and no strikes. Alex, I don't know who the best bunter is on this team, but I tell you, Alex Franklin has put down some beauties this season when he's been called to do that. And he's a very fundamentally sound player, four-year player for the Wildcats, one of the few seniors that gets a lot of playing time as he's Kyron squares to bunt. This time he hits it foul up the first baseline, and the count is two balls and one strike. With runners at first and second, the, uh, the first baseman, he's not going to hold. So the, uh, the first baseman, as you can see on our stream, is playing basically at the corner. This is one of those where you'd like to get down the third baseline if you're going to bunt. If you bunt it towards first base side, the first baseman will likely pick it up and look to throw over at third or potentially maybe get it out at second. So if you're going to bunt in this situation, you'd rather get it down the third baseline because the third baseman can't – the third baseman's not going to be able to get a throw down to second. Throw down to second. The ball skips away but not far enough. And – Richie now in a two-ball, two-strike. or Actually, Richie's the right base runner at second. Runner at first is Alex Franklin. Kai Welch is the batter. He's got a two-ball, two-strike count. Hammerin Warren East is on deck for the Wildcats. Number four was my number in high school, David. Mine was number three. That is Mikey Teasley's number. The pitch to Kai... Evidently a little high and inside. We've got, a, I believe, a full count now. Three balls and two strikes. Why did you pick four, or did you, or did you pick four? Uh, it was assigned to us, so I think my brother wore 77, and then my other brother wore, oh, geez, I don't even know what number he wore. He's currently at Walter State. 3-2 pitch is ball four, and that was close. And Kai is the base runner and the Wildcats have the bases loaded with nobody out and look who's coming to bat. Warren East who hit a home run his last plate appearance and went over 330 feet. He has scored two runs and has walked. Big opportunity for the freshman. Bases loaded, nobody out. An opportunity to kind of break this game open. Really, I'll take anything in the gaps. This is a large field. If he can get one up in the jet stream and send one out of here, this place will go electric. David, I know you will be electric if he gets this one out of here. He hits the ball well to center field. It's going to get a run in. It's going to be a sacrifice fly in an RBI. Tagging and scoring run number five is Richie Ferreira. Another RBI for... Warren East, and he has had a perfect night with the sacrifice fly and the RBI. More importantly, the Wildcats lead Greenville by a score of 5-3 to three here in the sixth. And back to the top of the order we go to Mikey Teasley. Mikey is 1-4-3 in the ballgame, a strikeout, a single, and a fly out to left field. M Mikey playing short after about the third inning of this ballgame. Runners on the corners, the pitch. Cut on a foul tipped, and the count is 0-1. I think Mikey was trying to put that one out of the ballpark as well based on that swing. Warren East, hitting-wise, you know, you look at, uh, I know the game's not over, Oak Ridge with the lead here, um, but Warren East, the nine hole, I mean, the, the freshman, uh, making a name for himself here. Throw over to first and back to the bag. Go Kyron. 
I couldn't sniff the field. I couldn't sniff a varsity field when I was a freshman. <laughs> it's very well. I mean, and the Wildcats had three starting in the first game as that ball is hit on the ground shortstop. Hopefully not a double play. They've got one, and that is it. And that's only the second out. Greenville thought there was three outs, and they didn't go. They might have had a chance for the double play, and the run scores. The Wildcats get the run in as they uh, they thought Greenville thought that was the third out of the inning but not the case and the Wildcats plate another run and it's six to three and the Wildcats have a runner at first I mean they, they, they got the force out at second and then didn't even try to get the runner at first thinking that the third out and the Wildcats continue to bat here and here comes the throw he throws it into center field and the Wildcats have a stolen base and Mikey is at second with uh, two outs, and the Wildcats on top six to three. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. I just I think they all fell asleep, and that's you know when you're taught young, uh, at a young age, every time there's an out, really in between batters, even you, you know you're hollering out how many outs there are, and I, I mean it seemed like the entire team forgot how many outs there were, and that run scores. That's a that's a big mistake. By Greenville. Let's see what Parker can do to try to get Mikey in. Beginning for the Wildcats. He's going from third. Ball's hit on the ground. In the hole, that's a base hit. Rounding third and coming in to score is Mikey Teasley on the RBI single by Parker Free. And the Wildcats lead Greenville now 7-3. to three. Well, that, that mental error by Greenville defensively is now at least going to cost two runs. A good two-out RBI single by Parker Free in the left field. That is his second hit of the ball game. That brings up Peyton Witter, who's due for a hit. He's 0 for 3. 7-3 to three Wildcats. The Wildcats entered this inning down 3-2, to two, so five runs have scored here in the sixth inning. And the Wildcats officially hit through. This is the ninth batter of the inning. And as you mentioned, here's the runner going to second. That's another stolen base. The head first slide by the Wildcat runner, Izzy Mitchell, and the Wildcats have another runner in scoring position and a one ball, no strike count on Peyton Witter. Izzy has already two stolen bases in the ball game. He's in scoring position. Norris, the pitcher, comes to the plate outside. And the count is two balls and no strikes. 7-3 Wildcats. Getting kind of late in Kingsport, 10:47, second game of the day for the Wildcats and Greenville. Norris checks the runner, the pitch. Hit in the center field, that's another base hit. Here comes Izzy, he gets the green light. Here comes the throw, it's cut off, and the Wildcats score again. Big, big RBI single, the first hit of the game for Peyton Witter, and the Wildcats score their sixth run of the inning, and up their lead over the Greenville Green Devils. Good job of hitting the Wildcats, taking advantage of the Green Devil pitching here in the sixth inning. Very similar to what we saw in the Sevier County game, what Sevier County did to Oak Ridge. The Wildcats are now in the lead, eight to three. And Cam Welch, who led off the inning with a single, came around and got the, got the scoring started. He is back in the box now. I'm gonna have to, having to make some changes, a lot of things going on here in my scorebook. I'm doing all of this in pen, so I'm having to make a lot of marks. Here in this in this pen. So let's see. Cam Welch is one for three, and a strikeout. He hits the ball into the gap to left center field. The center fielder can't get it. It's over his head. Rounding second, heading towards third is Peyton Witter. He is getting the green light. Heading towards third, it's going to be a triple for the Wildcat. And Oak Ridge scores again, and it's nine to three Wildcats over the Green Devils. The Wildcats hitting, finally coming alive late in the ball game. All because Greenville forgot how many outs there were, David. They would have been out of this inning and said Oak Ridge making the Green Devils pay. What is that, four runs off of the mental error from the Green Devils and Oak Ridge making them pay a triple that time by Cam Welch. That's his second hit of the inning, David. Cam Welch is the batter. He had a double this inning. And he takes ball one. He's walked, and he had a double in the first inning. He's officially two for two in the ball game. So Izzy Mitchell scores a run for the Wildcats. And here's the pitch. The ball is hit on the ground, deep short. He feels it. He throws in time. And the inning finally, mercifully for Greenville, comes to a close. Big inning for the Wildcats. Oak Ridge 
puts seven runs on the board, and they now lead the Green Devils 9-3 to three here in Kingsport. We are live on our YouTube channel, Prep Radio, and we'll be back in a moment. David Clary back here along with Lee Wexler. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. The Wildcats with a comfortable six-run lead to this point. Cy Stevens back out on the hill for Oak Ridge. Approaching 11 o'clock in Kingsport. Pitch from Cy is down low a ball, one ball, no strikes. It's funny, just a moment ago, the coaching staff and our dugout asked us what the score was. We have no scoreboard. I know they're keeping a book down there, but so many runs scored and so much happened in that inning that I guess they lost track, and it's 9-3 to three Wildcats. As uh, Cy Stevens behind in the count, two balls and no strikes. I know Cy doesn't want to start walking batters. He wants to get through this one. Two balls, no strikes. Side comes to the plate, hit on the ground. Third base side, fielded by Kai Welch. He throws across to Peyton Witter, who can't feel the throw, and it eludes him and rolls into right field and all in the foul territory, and they've got a runner at second. Kai fielded it okay. The ball bounced up, and Peyton just couldn't get it out of the, the turf, and they've got a runner at second with nobody out. That's the catcher Noah Murray reached for the first time today. He'll be 0 for 3 because that'll be uh, an error on the third base, but so not what Oak Ridge was looking for there. You got the ground ball for Cy Stevens, but a low throw, uh, and Cam wasn't able to dig it out. So a lot of insurance runs for Oak Ridge. Uh, if you're Cy Stevens, you just want to kind of get an out at a time. Runner at second. Who's this? This is Kane Ricker. It's two for two. With two takes, singles. Takes the ball. One ball, no strikes. Best part about this press box, even though it's you know a, a baseball press box, there is a heater, and it is running. And it's we got our window window open, but it is still kind of cool. But that heat is taking a little bit of the edge off. You can look, and our guys in Greenville, they've got to be miserable because it, it rained hard. They've both played two games as that pitch is cut on and missed. They've got to be just soaking wet. I'm sure the showers are going to be flowing after this one for both teams because, man, it, it was a cold rain and it is it is still chilly. Pitch, that's up high. I think we got a full count now, three balls and two strikes. Let me check. Umpire will give me a little signal. Put his mask back on. Two balls and two strikes. 
Runner at second, nobody out. Big lead at second, the pitch. Hit foul. Out of play, off the netting. And the count remains at two balls and two strikes. Nearing 11 o'clock, David, I hope you are wide awake. I know you've had a long week, but nearing 11 o'clock here in Kingsport. 2-2 two -two pitch, hit in the air, foul territory. Peyton Witter under it, makes a nice catch. And I, they need to touch the bag at second, and I believe they'll, I mean, he didn't tag. There's no way, they need to touch the bag at second. That he did not. I think not, that's what they're saying. Someone's got to say something down there. I thought that was an early tag. I know I, didn't, oh, it, I, know it, I don't it, have it. In it the most definitely was. And they tag him out here, and that's out number. Oh, man. I don't believe that. Let's I know I don't have it in the shot because my camera was panned over to over at first. That's he, he was Peyton Witter over there at first. I, met, I said Cam Welch. Peyton Witter over at first. So I, I didn't get that on the camera, unfortunately. But, you know, one out, you trade a run. You, you trade an out for a base, so hopefully this – Hopefully the runner at third really won't hurt too much. Really nice play, though, by Peyton Witter. Let's, let's not forget that. He had to make the go a long way to make that over-the-shoulder catch in foul territory, and I'm convinced that guy left early. There's, um, there's no way he got that, that far. This will be Corbin Cannon, who's grounded out to first and second. So 0 for 2 with two ground outs to the right side of the field. Pitch. Oak Ridge fans thought it was a strike. The count is two balls and no strikes. And a lot of times you really don't see often umpires overturn calls with runners leaving the bag earlier unless it's just so obvious. Even if they did leave slightly early, I mean, the umpire, I, I guess they just don't want to be in that situation where they don't want to overturn a call. I don't think he was watching, to be honest I'm with you. I'm not sure he was either. Two balls, one strike, the pitch. There's a pretty pitch. And for the record, I think the umpires have actually been really good all day. I, I we agree, haven't had I an agree. issue I, at all. I, I, I mean, I think these umpires have done a fantastic job. I, I would agree with that. I'm, I'm not, but I think he missed that call. Three balls, one strike. That looked like strike two right there, but I didn't get the call. And that is up high, ball four. So they've got runners on the corners with one out in a nine to three ball game. Wildcats on top. Cy Stevens in relief, trying to nail down a win for the Wildcats. Oak Ridge lost to Sevierville, Sevier County in the first ball game, seven to two. They're up nine to three here in the sixth. This is the pitcher Carson Norris, bats from the left side. I've got him popping out to shortstop. This will be, I guess, his second at bat. I think Colton Smith was in that nine-hole spot. So now we've got Carson Norris batting. Pitches. Called strike, and the count is 0-1. If you notice, and it's kind of rare, I mean, we've had t teams where we didn't have all these lefties. The Wildcats have a lot of lefties that can throw. And there's another called strike, and that I thought it was. So it actually calls the ball. One ball, one strike. Camden Welch is left-handed. Peyton Witter, left-handed thrower. That pitch is a little bit high and inside. Two balls and one strike. Cy Stevens throws from the left side. It's interesting, though, uh, and I, I, I keep meaning to ask Peyton Witter this. He, he, throw, he, he throws from the left side, bats from the right side, which is not totally unusual, but it's just kind of strange for a high school kid as that pitch is up high and Cy a little bit struggling with his control. Don't want to put any more base runners on. You've got a six-run lead. You're late in the ball game. I know a lot of guys, some guys throw right and bat left. That's typically what you see. And then occasionally you will see a lefty bat righty. That's ball four. So now the Green Devils have the bases loaded with one out. And it looks like we might have a pitching change. That's Coach Travis Free, and he is going to – Head to the mound. Good job by Cy. Just like we saw Carson Fagan in the first ball game, Carson pitched great in relief of John Ulrich, and Cy has done a really masterful job keeping it close here. Looks like Peyton's going to switch out gloves, and it looks like Peyton's going to come in to try to close things out, I think. Looks like he's putting down his first baseman's mitt. Peyton struggled a little bit in that sixth inning. Not all his fault. 
I think he's the guy that's going to come in. They're and calling in the right fielder who's currently in right field for the Wildcats. I can't uh, see the yeah, number. I think it's Cam Welch. Cam Welch is the right fielder. Yeah. Well, let's see what they're going to do. I, and it is going to be Peyton Witter coming back out with his regular fielding glove. And I believe he will be the guy the second time today yep. that he'll be used on the mound. He's going to try to close things out and get this win for Cy Stevens and the Wildcats. While he warms up, we'll take a break. We'll be back in a moment to Kingsport. David Clary back here along with Lee Wexler. The Wildcats on top of Greenville, 9-3. to three. Bases are full of Green Devils. Peyton Witter is the new pitcher for the Wildcats. Third one use, and he throws a strike on his first pitch, and the count is 0-1. Oak Ridge Soccer Cats win tonight. They knocked off Pal 3-1. to one. Congratulations to them. Peyton comes to the plate, the pitch. Wanted to swing, did not, held up, and the count is one and one. This is uh, Maddox Bishop, the leadoff hitter, 0 for 2 with a walk, reached on an E6, walked in the third, flew out to center in the fifth. There's a strike. Good looking pitch there, and the count is one ball and two strikes. Peyton didn't have his best stuff in the first ball game today, but he's throwing hard and throwing strikes. One ball, two strikes, bases loaded, 9-3 Wildcats, bottom of the sixth. Peyton comes to the plate, cut on a miss, and that's a strikeout. And that's out number two, and one batter away from getting out of a jam. We're past 11 o'clock, David, and if they're still doing time limit, you've got to figure that the, the time has expired. So this very well could be the final out. Bases loaded, here's the first pitch. Hit in the air on the infield. That should be out number three. Calling forward is Kyron Welch, and he makes the catch for the third out of the inning. And I believe that is the final out of the ball game. And Oak Ridge has defeated the Green Devils of Greenville by a final score of nine to three. So Peyton comes in, shuts down the Green Devils, and Oak Ridge wins at nine to three. A really big inning for the Wildcats. Seven runs in the Sixth inning to close the door on the Green Devils, and they win their first ball game here in Kingsport. A big win for the Wildcats. The Wildcats struggled early on in the ball game to get base runners. They struggled to get hits. The the pitcher for Harmon was just fantastic. He struck out six or seven guys through the first two or three innings, and the Wildcats then got things rolling. It might have all started when Warren East hit that home run to make it a 3-2 ball game. That kind of seemed to loosen things up. And then the floodgates opened up for the Wildcats in the sixth, and they win it by a score of 9-3. to I'm not sure what kind of a postgame we can have. I'm sure they 
people here at the uh, Hunter Wright Stadium want to get out of here as quickly as possible. But, Lee, if you have a moment, why don't you run down the totals of this ball game? And I've been talking with my mic off this entire time. So why don't I go back and run down the pitching. Cam Welch started the game, three innings pitched, allowed four hits, two walks, issued three runs, struck out two batters. Cy Stevens in relief, two and a third innings, issued one hit, three walks, gave up zero runs. And then Peyton Winter finishes the game with a strikeout and a pop out to third. And looking at the Oak Ridge hitting lineup, Mikey Teasley, one for four, struck out in the first, singled uh, in the third inning, flew out to left, and then also reached on a fielder's choice in the sixth, but did come around to score. Parker Free was two for four, flew out to left field in the first inning, singled in the, and singled in the third, ground out to short in the fifth inning, and then singled and scored in the sixth inning, also had a stolen base. As I forgot to mention, Mikey Teasley also stole a base uh, in the sixth inning. Peyton Winter was one for four, grounded out to short, struck out swinging, grounded out to second, and then singled and also came around to score in the sixth inning. Uh, Cam Welch, two for four, struck out, grounded out to shortstop, and then singled and tripled. Had a couple RBIs, Cam Welch scoring one run, scored in the sixth inning. Cy Stevens, uh, two for three, had a double, a walk, another double, scored a run, and then grounded out to short. Richie Ferreira, 0 for 2, two strikeouts and a walk, came around to score in the sixth. Alex Franklin, 1 for 3, had a bunt single in the sixth. He came around to score and then struck out swinging his first two at-bats. Uh, Camden Britton was 0 for 2, struck out swinging both times. Kai Welch came into pinch hit in the sixth inning. He walked uh, in his only at-bat. And then Warren East, the freshman in the nine hole, was uh, 1 for 1, walked and scored in the third inning, stole third in that inning, homered in the fifth inning, and then had a sack, RBI, sack fly RBI in the sixth inning. And that's the hitting lineup. We're going to have some Oak Ridge players come up, and David's going to get some interviews. I don't know if we're going to be able to get the camera we'll, we'll get on them. We'll we might over there. be able to move the camera over towards the wall. Oak Ridge successful in game two of the day here in Kingsport, 9-3 to three over the defending 3A, Class 3A state champions, the Greenville Green Devils. David? Let's let you hand that mic to whoever's first. Looks like it's Izzy is going to come first. And let's turn the mic over, or the, turn, turn the camera. I know it's going to be a little tight there. Let's get Izzy in. There he is, a little tighter than that. Let's get a little better shot of the senior Wildcat. And first off, Izzy, thanks for, for joining us here. Uh, things kind of started slow today in the Sevier County ball game. Sevier County, you had a, a two-to-one lead. Lost it, and then they had a big inning. It kind of turned things around in this ball game as you had a big six inning. Talk about you scored two runs in the game, scored at least one, stole a couple of bases. Talk about this win tonight. Um, it really just came down to whoever who is going to be able to step up. Uh, Dub got us going with the big hit, uh, big bomb. Got the uh, dugout going with a lot of energy, and that's one thing. Uh, carrying the energy throughout the game. 
cheering on our guys, uh, always talking, just keeping the energy up, never letting it die. That factors into it a lot. That's why I try to do my best in the dugout uh, as a team leader, just keep us up, never let that energy die. And you see how it factors into the game. Really big inning, a lot of big hits. Uh, the guy we're going to talk to in a moment, uh, Cy had a big hit, but then the hit parade, everybody batted around, everybody yeah. got into the act, and uh, it was a good win. These, these guys won the state championship in their classification yeah. last year. And how important is it was it to bounce back after the first game today? It was very important because it shows our like identity. We always try to play fast, play, play with energy, always keep play a hundred. Um, when we go out there, we're going to give everything we got. So that's a, that really means a lot to what we do. Uh, no matter how many uh, runs we get down, no matter what happens in the game, we got to stay locked in because we know how the game can shift at any moment. All it takes is one AB, as you see. Izzy, you're a senior on this team. What's it like playing with all these young guys? It's actually pretty cool because you get to like bring them up, help them develop, teach them things that you've learned throughout your course of playing baseball, especially for Coach Free because he's not just any typical average type of coach. There's some things you should know, get to know, learn about them. And so it's really like I really love the role that it's allowed me to play on this team, being able to like step up, lead some guys in the right way, be able to back some up when things go when things go uh, don't go their way. So yeah. Izzy, I appreciate it. Let me get Cy in. Yes, sir. Thank you. I know you're cold and wet, so you probably can't wait to get out of that. Here is Cy Stevens. Let me back up the camera, Cy. You're a little taller than uh, Izzy. than Izzy. You had a couple of good things go your way today. Not only. Let's see, at the plate, you had a couple doubles. You had several RBIs, but you also came in in relief and just kind of held Greenville to where they were to get your bats going to get this win. Talk about your performance on the mound and at the plate. Well, I had that double in, like, the second inning. Uh, I just saw everyone was uh, – we weren't hitting that good yet. We were down. And then I, I picked up on it that he was throwing outside. So I thought in my head, I'm going to take it and hit it to opposite field. And I did do that for a double. You know, Cam came out a little earlier than I expected him to come out. You came in, just kind of shut the door on him. Talk about your pitching. Were you pleased with your performance tonight? Uh, I mean, kind of. Uh, I did good the first inning, I believe. Uh, then the second inning, I got a little rattled, but I stayed. I knew my team would make plays, and yeah. But I don't think you allowed anything, did you? I no, I didn't. No, no, actually, no, no so, I didn't. I mean, that's, I like your attitude. You, even though you didn't give up anything, you still are not 100% because you know there's improvement. Are you wet and cold right now? Oh, I'm freezing. <laughs> when when uh, Warren hit that home run, I mean, that's, this is a major league size park. It's over 330 down the lines. Well, hit the top of the fence. What's it like when a little guy, a little freshman, <laughs> pops a home run? And Izzy said he thought that might have gotten the team going. Oh, absolutely. I believe that hitting's contagious, and it just it sparks something for us. But, yeah, seeing Warren like, be able to hit like that is crazy. Just to see all the talent we have, like Parker, all them young guys. It's awesome. So I'm going to let you go here. Congratulations. You. you get the win on the day. And uh, hopefully, you'll, as a team, you'll get another win tomorrow. Yes, sir. Right. That is Cy Stevens. Let's get Coach Free in here. I know the guys at the stadium here probably want to get out as quickly as they can. Coach, I know you're wet. <laughs> it rained in the first game, rained in the second game. It's cold out there. You didn't play particularly well in the first game after the sixth inning. That sixth inning. You had a two-to-one lead going into it. I'll, we'll start with that one. They made some mental errors, made some physical errors, and Sevier County, a good team, took advantage yeah, of it. That's right. We did, we, you're, you hit the nail on the head. We didn't execute. Uh, they hit – I think they had five straight hits to start that inning, which got us into a downward spiral, and then we had to try to find a, make a way to make a pitching change and then all those things. You're just not quite ready for that inning. You know, we didn't execute. Then all of a sudden it snowballs. We don't make two plays. And before you know it, they score six runs or whatever they scored in that one inning just to make the game to get out of hand. But then in this game, it's a complete opposite. We get to the sixth inning. We just kind of just you know, lull and then the sixth. And then we get about six runs in an inning. So it's the tale of two games. And what good news is we came out on top on the last one. Your, your relief pitchers did extra, extremely well. I thought Carson Fagan pitched incredible Phenomenal. tonight. I Phenomenal. mean, in the yeah. first game. And then Asai and Peyton just closed the door at the That's end. Right. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, Carson really, the game, really that game there was hard to manage just because we, John, had to come out so early. And Carson really is a kind of, 
he's kind of our guy that bridges the gap between a, a starter to the late innings. And we're trying to milk three plus innings out of him. That's kind of out of his comfort zone. And that's really not what we've designed him to be. So he got to the 50 pitch mark and you saw what happens. He started to flatten out a little bit. His breaking ball wasn't as sharp. And then they found like three or four barrels straight. So then, you know, by the time you get Peyton in there and get him loose, it's just almost, it's almost too late at that point to kind of get it. But all in all, I thought we played really well in the second game. We finally got the barrels going. We finally started scoring some runs and able to play our style for sure. You know, you got that that one inning. It's just it was the kept the the, the line running as yep. uh, as they used to say. Lots of lots of hits. You batted around, but uh, you know, I thought Peyton didn't pitch particularly well in the first game, but he was right there. I yeah, mean, that's right. bases loaded, came in and, and shut him down. Well, I had a conversation. I don't know if anybody saw it or what, but I had a conversation with Peyton at the end of the going into the fifth and told him like, you know, listen, you're kind of feeling sorry for yourself. Like I see the way that you're carrying. You're not being a good teammate. You're not being a leader that I need you to be. And then. All of a sudden, he gets over to the top of the step, starts pulling for his teammates, and then all of a sudden, guess what? Single, drives in two big runs. Then we knock him in, and then it kind of opened it up from that point. And then no better way to put him in than to close the door right there at the end. Tell us about tomorrow. Uh, well, we the schedule's changed once again. Uh, we're going to Science Hill. We're playing at Cardinal Park tomorrow. Um, and we're playing, I think, last I saw. Now, there's an email on my phone. I haven't got to it yet just with all this going on, but I think we're going to play – a team named Tullahoma, maybe. Okay. I don't know. I'm not sure, but I think we play at uh, we play at 12:30 tomorrow at Cardinal Park. Okay. I'm, I'm glad you told me the time change. Yep. So that's good. We that's knew right. it was at Cardinal Park. Didn't know it was Tullahoma. I'm glad it's 12:30 as the rain starts again. once again. Yep. Coach, just your final comments on today. Uh, good, good team win there on the back end. Glad we played well and were able to finish strong. So uh, look forward to another opportunity tomorrow. Coach, thanks a lot. As Travis Free, the Wildcats win this one 9 to 3 is the final score. The Wildcats fall to Sevier County 7 to 2 in the first game. We're going to close it out here. We appreciate Lee coming up to Kingsport with us for our broadcast. I'm going to close it out Lee without you talking again so we can get out of here. I know this guy wants to get out. Final score of the ball game, Oak Ridge defeats Greenville 9 to 3 until tomorrow 12:30 from Science Hill. So long everybody.